All right, folks. Um, first, let me just do uh, some uh, just housekeeping first. Uh, I want to make sure that you can hear me. So if uh, somebody or anybody can let me know if they can hear me properly. And then it seems that uh, I had to reset my uh, XSplit software. So I have to reconnect the chat so we, we get a nice chat display here. So just bear with me. Um, I had to do that last time already. And it seems... I need to do that every time I um, I want to re I, I do a fresh install or, or install a patch on XSplit, um, which isn't great. Okay, audio is fair. There is the chat. Uh, let me get rid of that. Okay, so well, if you're very welcome. I, th I think we have a few people here um, already. Um, but uh i think you you know you you know what the story is at this stage i've done a few of these and i, I try to space them every odd month or something like that but uh the the idea is that it's just it's it's a chat it's just a live q a uh, most likely won't be playing music because that's not quite what i do but um if you have any question if you i don't want to know anything or if you just want to chat and just you know uh just you know no stuff about the channel or me or whatever or uh, exchange and say hi um this is the place for it. So um, what I'll be doing is um, uh, I'll be just reading all your questions and comments in order until we mutually get sick of each other. Uh, usually that happens, you know, an hour and a half, two hours in. So uh, there you go. Uh, or whenever my voice breaks. This time I won't be uh, drinking whiskey. I have a, I have a nice big glass of wine. Of uh, water, sorry. <laughs> that was telling. I had a glass of wine earlier on, mind you. But uh, there you go uh so um don't panic if you don't you know if you've asked a question and and i haven't answered straight away um it's just i, I go through these sequentially so it's it's going to be a, a while till i get your question but i'll do my best to just to follow um follow up on everybody um yeah so i just wanted to say first i mean i i haven't been uploading as frequently since really the summer uh, reason being, I have, uh, it's not because I'm bored or anything like that, it's just, I, I've had a lot of just real life stuff to do and uh, um, house, you know, just uh, uh, stuff to attend to and, and family stuff and other kind of things, you know, life in general. So I just haven't had time really to work on, uh, on covers. Uh, I try to do one every two weeks. Um, I don't think there'll be one next week. I, I'll, I'll be struggling to release it. So it'll be the week after so right now it's it's one every two weeks and one every three weeks you know that kind of stuff i am doing my best to get back on schedule things are are looking less busy i've also been trying to sell a lot of my uh, collection you can see stuff behind that's uh, kind of messy but um I, I found out how to just not just du uh, duplicates but sh d boards and games that i had like three copies of you know i just I don't really need any other, you know, any three copies of stuff of games I don't really want one copy of to start with. So I've been uh, just trying to list and selling a lot of that, and then I had loads of uh, house stuff. Um, so I'm sorry about that. The covers haven't been as frequent, but we, we'll get back on schedule. I, I'd also promised I'd do a few uh, themed months, you know, more uh, Mega Man months and MSX months and C64 stuff. And uh, yeah, it, I'll, I'll be struggling. There's only there's only this month and December now, so it's it's going to be tight to fit three months of team stuff. But anyway, um, so I suppose I'll just uh, I see a few comments already, but I'll just go through. I'm going to say hi to everybody who said hi as well from the starts. But this Moonlight tav Tavern, hi, uh, Vinicius Valentim. You'll have to excuse me if I uh, butcher your name. Hello, uh, the Wanderer. Team Art, is it? Oh, Team Art Vine, is it Art Vine? I'm never sure. Um, it feels like it should be pronounced Art Vine, but I could be, I could be wrong. Uh, <laughs> Eric Miranda, hi. Um, <laughs> Vinicius is asking, where is is this live from? Well, it's from my recording room slash studio slash workshop slash everything I do um, is from this tiny room. Uh, Nickel Wise says uh, uh, it's live from Ollie's terrifying castle in the, <laughs> the <laughs> lake in High Highlands. Um, yeah, I, I'm in Ireland, not far off. Actually, I'm in a, just a gorgeous spot in Ireland, the, the Burn, and it's stuck on the south side of Galway Bay. Uh, so I'm between the Connemara and the Burn, and it's just, it's, it's pretty scenic area, and I have 
really no neighbors to speak of so it's it's quite it's not uh, remote and isolated there is a few houses around but you know it's uh we're not attached to each other and we have a fields acres of fields in between so there's no street light or anything that, like that so it's not far off i suppose from the uh Lakin highlands um andrew uh says i actually woke up this morning with this exact song in my head or oh, the uh, song from the intro the uh, castle uh, uh vampire killer castlevania still my favorite tune to date i i love this tune um you can probably tell i mean i started the uh, the channel with this uh tune and uh yeah uh where was i uh quentin robert tit, tit quentin robert hmm. um says hi salut in, in french but yeah hi uh nickel the wise howdy motherfuckers uh i think that was addressed at everybody so everybody says hi say hi to a uh, nickel the wise um gabriel dreamer hello uh marlon magno hello from brazil hello um uh, marlon hello brazil um nickel device says the audio is fine yeah there's a few people saying that now um everything sounds okay uh, matt brewer um you're a pack home of uh, again excuse me for pressuring your name if i did uh, hello from russia this is so cool Th that never ceased to amaze me um the the variety of uh, people listening from different countries i mean you know here i am in ireland and people from russia and, uh, and and brazil and all over the place i assume america there's probably some people in the uk we might see some friends from ireland here too uh, at some point um gabriel says gabriel says everything sounds 100 oh yeah fair enough yeah there you go um andrew art art uh, art fine um tell me if i'm pronouncing your name right but uh, hello from kentucky uh first time live, li joining the live chat yeah this is um there's no plan for these live chats really so uh, that's all i'm uh, um uh that's all I'm, I'm really doing just answering your questions i ramble a lot just mumble to my beard um but that's really it it's just to sort of catch up tell you what's going on with the channel as well what the plans are what i've been doing because some people i get you know periods like that i get messages of, uh, of people going you know have you stopped making videos or are you giving up or are you bored or if you lost interest and all that and uh, yeah it's inevitable if you don't keep up like the weekly videos people just now just assume you've given up or you're not as interested as you were but no it's just you know life life uh, i have to you know it goes in it gets in the way of youtube and it's not my main gig you know i have a, I have, a I have a job and i have a you know a house and a wife and a life you know so but so priority is that and then uh, if i have time for the rest uh this channel is next um uh, the uh, luca bear hello everyone but what about me You're not saying hello to me um gabriel dreamer so happy you like my uh, drawing um which oh that was the you tweeted me that was that you uh, yeah you tweeted me a, a drawing you'd made uh, with the banjo and uh, uh kind of it was it a version of myself as a Mega Man type of character that was very cool very uh, very funny thank you very much um nicola wise no big deal ollie it's lovely to see you doing well thank you thank you very much um van oh no i lost the chat uh, van rose um hello ollie love the monkey island and tv theme cover yeah covers you rock thank you very much you know i it's funny those tv th theme did really well really really well and um i for a while i couldn't do them again because they'd get flagged for copyright so I, i'd lose all pretty much the revenue but as of a few months or week well a couple of months now the um the mcm i'm a part of has had the option to share revenue so i i like that because i'd rather i'd rather share the revenue with the original or license holders you know but i still made the video there's still some effort it's still my video production so it's cool that you know i get a share of the revenue generate so that means i'll probably be doing more i haven't done as many either because it's what's interesting is a lot of people who subscribe to, to the channel uh, subscribe for the video game covers and they're not quite as interested in the series stuff somehow um maybe not people who are here but i'm talking about just majority and, and statistically so usually the views come from just somewhere else and uh, and people who might not subscribe to the channel but will share the video it's really interesting the, the songs are the same the full songs are the same so 
I can also start doing more full songs now again, um, which is great. Um, looking forward to that. So yeah, just y- there might be more of those series and full song uh, covers. Uh, RGB Craft dude, how are you doing? Um, uh, he, um, check out his channel. Actually, he does cool uh, cool craft. RGB Craft um, evening video. Uh, got in time. How are you today? I'm very very well. Uh, I just had food and uh, I'm having a just big glass of water with some lemon in it because uh, my voice is inevitably going to uh, go halfway through this uh, stream so i came armed um andrew i'm just gonna say andrew <laughs> in the u.s it's a w uh not a v or oh, artwine art artwine or artween artwine i'm assuming then um yeah artvine would be what i, w- I would hear when i go to germany yeah, that w is, is pronounced v um so art artwine Fair enough. We'll just say Andrew, won't we? Um, uh, Shimmering Pilgrim. Hello from New York City. Is that it? NYC. That's your New York City, isn't it? I was there once, uh, very briefly. Uh, I spent, well, we spent two days. I was there for the uh, Retro World Expo the first year. And uh, we'd, I, I'd never, Fiona had been to New York, but I'd never been. So that was my first time there. And we spent two days in New York. And in obviously Manhattan and uh, just walking that's all we did we just walked for first day we walked for nine hours the second day we walked for 11 hours altogether like we slept really well but um just went from north to south ish um and just kind of walked everywhere it was it was just really cool and we took our time as well it's just uh, that's what we do we like we explore a small area just take our time sit and and watch people interacting it's kind of it's kind of cool but it was uh, certainly yeah uh, yeah it was kind of mind-blowing and and uh, it's yeah what a place crazy i wouldn't like to live there but it's 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 a must-see really it's it's a it's a crazy crazy place um really interesting um i'd, I'd go back again but then again i think i just want to spend a day or two and that's that's that you know cities aren't quite my thing <laughs> even though this is a small village here and um, you know i can cycle to it but even that I, I i rarely go out there because just when there's more than 10 people i just i don't know no i don't panic but i just get a uh, freaked out it's too many people for me so imagine new york and and i lived in la as well that was a lot of people there. Um, Andrew, uh, I discovered the U-Bass from your video. Um, when did you start playing it? The U-Bass, I kind of, sort of early on in, in the channel, all things considered. It's over there. Um, here, I'm going to try this. I have this uh, other little webcam. But uh, let me, where is it? YouTube, uh, live chat view, blah, blah, blah. Let me just uh, bear with me for a second. Here it is. The U-Bass is this guy it's like a ukulele this guy here it's like a um, it's a mix between a, a ukulele which you see beside it here that's the ukulele and that's the or you bass here um so it's a mix between that and the bass essentially and uh, it sounds like a bass it's, it's really really cool instrument it's got those nylon strings and uh, and it's it's tidy it's very portable and i do like the sound it's sort of it's it almost got that uh, sort of double bassy type sound so I, I really like it and um, I got that from a company called Kala uh, and they, they specialize in ukuleles in general they actually send me the ukulele as well but I, I, I actually sent them an email one year was it 2014 and of 2014 or was it beginning of yeah 2015 maybe at the beginning of 2015 and uh, I sent them an email saying I, I, I you know, I'm, I've been looking at your um, the the U base, um, and I'm just wondering if you'd like to send me one um, <laughs> to sponsor the channel. And I said, re, you know, regardless of the answer, I'm I'm gonna get one anyway. So, but I thought I was just very honest about it. Said I'd shot, I, I thought I'd chance it, and they actually replied and they said, yeah, we'll send you one. So that was cool, and they did me a musician price on the um, on the ukulele. So that was very very uh, nice of them. They didn't have to do that. So that's why in the channel. In the old videos, you see them as a sponsor for the next, the few years after that, because it was just really cool. And then we sort of lost touch. I, I tried to uh, get in touch with them. Uh, I can't remember why. I wasn't looking for an instrument, but they never replied. 
that happened a few times so like i think you know we it's probably a good time to part ways but it was really really nice of them um to, to send me that in the first place really love it really like the sound of it it takes a while to get used to it especially if you're used to the feel of the uh, metal strings on the bass which I, I have one here as well um but now I'm, I'm sort of used to it the only thing i would say is the uh, because it's nylon strings the um the the strings get loose so you have to to get looser every time you play it so you just have to tighten them and you know retune it every time not by much but it, it does lose a bit of tension um uh so you, you need to retune the instrument every time you pick it up which is i mean you have to do that for most instruments anyway but uh th this one it's it in invariably goes down so uh, uh you have to uh, you have to just watch that. Uh, other than that, it's been a great instrument. Really, really liking. I like the soft sound of it, um, and uh, and uh, yeah, it's got that nice round, round, not sharp kind of feel that a, a double bass would have. So that's cool. Um, where was I? Uh, New York City. Blah 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 blah. blah. Um, Marlon Magno. Um, uh, I really like your work. Thank you very much, dude. Um, that's very nice. Um, Andrew, uh, you are pronouncing my name just fine, far better than most people do here in the US. I'm very conscious of people's names that because there's so many different people from so many different places and different phonetic rules and that kind of stuff. And I mean, I am originally French. You know, I moved here to Ireland about 22 years ago now, and uh, my my name is Olivier, which in invariably gets um bastardized as oliver and then obviously that's where ollie came from but uh, it just uh, people could never get my name right and i've been called o olivia as well which was actually more annoying than oliver but um yeah so it's <laughs> very conscious of trying to pre pronounce people's names correctly because so many people mispronounce my own name um actually nobody calls me um, olivia anymore it's um it's uh, ollie uh, everybody calls me ollie now uh, not by choice, it just happened. Um, Shimmering Pilgrim, uh, amazing Dr. Wiley cover, my friend. Thank you very much. I wanted to redo that cover for so long. It just, it, it was okay. The original one I'd done was okay. It just wasn't quite right. Uh, was my, yeah, it just, it, it just didn't feel right or, or finished, properly finished. I, I always thought I could do it credit more better credit than i did um obviously when i when i released it i was happy with it and i was uh, I, I was satisfied with what i could have done at the time but um when i got the u bass when i got all the uh, these other instruments and then when i started doing it started with the uh, the metal man cover started approaching recording and arranging very differently much more dynamically i was like i could redo dr wiley um uh, and do a, a much better version of it at some point so uh, i have a goal for the end of the year of doing a Mega Man 2 album just the way i did the uh, the castlevania one the um, uh, banjo was it banjovania i called it but um so i want to release something for you know prob probably for um, christmas um of all the covers from Mega Man in one video that kind of stuff so uh, i was like that's a perfect uh, opportunity to do that uh, I still have a few pieces to to do, and I probably won't do videos for them. I'd probably just release them in that big video. Um, there might be one tune I still want to do, but like the intro tune, I'll probably just release that as a, just a bonus in the video, and it'll be a, a, available in the uh, in the album when it, it launches. But yeah, there you go. Um, so that's why I redone it, and I've done that for a few uh, tunes. Obviously, the the Wonder Boy for the Monster Boy game. And then the uh, Castlevania one that is now you know I, I use that as a mad now it's handy, but um, yeah there's a there's a couple more I wouldn't mind redoing um, and and doing a, a kind of a updated version maybe a 2020 version of a, two or three more tunes we'll see we'll see um, <clears throat> uh, Nickel the Wise uh, and yes I am tuning in from Texas in the colonies. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, I've just hung up my horse and stab <laughs> stabled my hat for the afternoon. Um, all right, all right. <laughs> Marlon Magno. I show all my, friend, uh, my friends their music and everyone is impressed by the quality. Uh, I show my friends their music. You mean uh, my, the, the, my music? Or you show your friends their own music? I'm confused. I'm assuming you mean uh, my music. Um, 
thank you anyway if that's what you mean but um yeah um rgb craft uh, how do you do when copyright strikes uh, i mean um how one looks for this kind of thing i want to use some of your song for the Yaja channel in your future how, yeah how do you know when uh, you get hit by copyright you get an email email sends you a, a youtube says um your video has been claimed for copyright by this entity or company and that kind of stuff and uh, and usually the email is 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 fine to tell you like you know they just tell you it's been hit for copyright don't panic like your channel is not in danger it's not it's not um it's not a strike it's not a, a a channel strike it's a copyright hit on your video so somebody recognized that the content that you have is their own and and rightfully so so they just put a, a copyright claim on it so what happens you get an email email just tells you uh, youtube just tells you by email and they said don't panic you know it's just a copyright it just means that uh, video uh, advertisement is disabled either is either disabled or not available in the countries or more likely uh, the uh, the revenue from the advertisement will be claimed by the copyright owner so until then until recently that's what happened um and now with my uh, with uh, screenwave they've now the ability to do revenue share because the argument was always that well fair enough the original video is the original content the song the composition is not mine but the performance is um and then the the, the you know the playing all the instruments the arrangement uh, of that song is my own content and the video is my own content so we're really at a like f four, three to one sort of ownership uh, and until recently the uh, the license holder for that song was getting all the revenue generated from the video now it's a revenue share i'm not sure exactly what the percentage is i'm assuming it's 50 50 but i, I have no figures on that but at least it means that um you know especially for those songs like the uh, the what i did metallica ones did four five hundred thousand views something like that i mean for metallica it's not a lot of money for me it is you know so it would have been great at the time to get some percentage of that um but it means if it happens now it at least i'll get somewhat compensation for, for compensated for the video and the arrangement and that kind of stuff so i can i can breathe and i can just focus on other thing others other than just video games uh, not that i I'll, I'll stop doing video game covers but it means i can return to you know doing every now and then a song or, or, or tv theme or you know things like that of a more sort of mainstream genre um it'll be great it'll open the channel for variety and new audience and that kind of stuff so um yeah that's how you know it they send you an email simple simple as if it's uh, if if the content has been claimed by somebody else now if you want to use music from my channel i don't i i can see there's a there's a report on youtube you can see who's been using your your stuff and if you've asked me before go ahead uh, i won't put a claim we won't have to share revenue like i'm just happy that you like it and you use it so i just i just dismiss them you know you can actually just dismiss them and, and just click no they're okay it's fine and uh, and that's usually that's actually not usually it's always what i do if you ask me before <laughs> that's all i ask just ask me and uh, my answer is always yes so um there you go but you know that i mean you you know the uh, the the synth wave music i've done on the other channel that's what it's for it's, it's for people to use in their own videos and um, that's why I, I did it for my 8-bit mansion channel that was the idea to do those music to have in the background um so i wouldn't have to worry about using somebody else's music and every, all the content would be my own on that channel so it's uh, it's it's why i did it and i just uh, opened the, the the content to whoever wants to use it and i see it in the video just if you want to use it take it actually these ones you don't even have to ask me just take them it's grand it's fine absolutely fine um and uh, and I, I i won't be i won't be claiming anything on those um uh andrew um now i'm learning the u-bass and playing it in the beginning uh, tr uh tradish folk band lots of fun and love it when you hear such a warm fat sound come uh out of a small instrument excuse me for the staggering there um there was something in the way um yeah it's 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 cool it's really it really is a warm it's a surprisingly big sound i know it's all i mean it's all amplified and uh, on its own it wouldn't stand against a, a double bass but mind you neither would a 
um, a standard uh, uh, electric bass, you know. Uh, actually, this has probably a bit more volume than an electric bass. But it's just, yeah, it's got that nice, big, fat, powerful sound for a tiny instrument. It really packs a punch. And uh, and you can do pretty much all the stuff, like all the slides. I, I abuse them in my video. It's great. Uh, it's great. Um, it's cool, yeah. Send me a link. I'd love to have you any uh, any recordings of your, of your band playing. Uh, send me a link. I'd love to see. What's the lineup in that band? Assuming you have uh, violins and banjos and guitars and, th and things like that. Um, is it folk as in songs, folk songs, Irish songs, or is it Irish trad, like uh, trad music, you know, you know, jigs and reels and and that kind of stuff, uh, which is my background. That's what I used to play. Uh, Charles, 2099. Hello. Hello. Um, Nico, Simple Mon Nico. Nico, how are you doing, dude? Um, uh, uh, good to see you here. Uh, Nico's one of the, you, you'll see, uh, you'll see his name in the end of the video, he's one of the top Patreon, uh, by the way, by the way, um, the channel has been approved for channel membership, um, as of was it this week, yeah, I just, uh, I just, uh, enabled that, uh, for somehow, it, I couldn't get it enabled, so I had to reach out to Screen Wave Media, and they, they sorted that with YouTube, but it's just been approved this week, so uh, I enabled all that. It's kind of like Patreon. That's what it is. Uh, it's probably handier for some folk. I offer, I offer different uh, rewards on there. Like the, um, it's set monthly as well. I, I'm going to have to just tweak that because I don't want it to clash with Patreon. But it's actually the rewards on the membership is uh, for the beginner level is the same as uh, early access to, you know, early access to videos. But um it's getting the uh, if you're interested in getting the individual uh track files for each project like for all the covers like if you just want to get the track file for just the bazooki or just the u bass or just the chord and that kind of stuff i'll, I'll put them on the on on the, on the, some somewhere like dropbox for you to access um so that that's that's what that's the difference in rewards because i didn't want to you know just have the same stuff uh, I just wanted to have just different rewards so people can choose one or the other, and and uh, th there's a reason to do either, you know. Um, Nickel Wise, have you ever gone uh, on deep dives for music from obscure games and found some real gems? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it does. It happens a lot that somebody suggests a tune, like they can, you know, can you do this tune? And uh, typically, my answer is no, because I just have a huge list. But I always check what they recommend <laughs> because very often you know i'm like oh yeah that's cool i'll add it to the list or what happens sometimes is that i'll just i click the link and i'll see another link or it the video will keep running and then at some point there's another really cool tune that i discover from another game so yeah it's 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 happened many times it's not something i i would seek because like i said my, my list of tunes to cover is is still many years long probably six or seven I probably more because i keep adding stuff to it so um so uh yes yeah, so i don't i don't go on deep dives like intentional deep dives but it does happen i get i get into the rabbit hole and uh and uh, <laughs> yeah and uh, and and get it you know discover new tunes uh andrew can i make a song request <laughs> i just said i i don't take requests but um i would love to hear you do a, co a cover of music from aston oh rast i see this uh, stuff here this is a rastan uh, pcb that uh, i'm oh, i'm just I, I sold um i have i have a, a double so I, I don't need it but rastan saga i, lo I love rastan um yeah well yeah i don't see i guess uh, i get at least two or three requests a day plus requests in the comments and all that and i i, I really can't pay attention to requests anymore because I, I just go i'll go crazy and then if if win got that i i actually take requests i'll just be flooded with requests and uh, it'll uh, it's it's um requests requests are, are tough because people just think they assume they hear it or they can hear it and usually I can't, you know, they can, oh, it, it sounds so great on the banjo and I can definitely hear it. And, and I, well, it's great that you can hear it, but I, I can't, you know. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I usually don't pay attention to uh, to requests. But like I said, I do check, if you send me a link, like I'll check the tune. Because sometimes, yeah, it's cool. It's it's cool. 
but uh, I no, I can't. I can't tell you yes, I'll do it or no, I I won't do it because it's just uh, other, it it'll open the floodgates uh, for that kind of stuff. Um, Van Rose, yes, do rest. <laughs> Martin Golo did great version uh, for the C sixty four. I uh, can only imagine what you could do with it. There you go. That's exactly what I was talking about. Yeah, but yeah, yeah um, that's another topic actually. Uh, that's very interesting. Is is uh, people? It happened for the. It happened for the R type uh, tune. I, I did the arcade one, and people started asking me for the C sixty four one. Same with Ghosts and Goblins. Uh, a lot of people asked me for the Amiga version and that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's not. It, it's not impossible. I don't mean you know that I'll never cover it. It's just uh, if I if I get into that lane of of of, uh, of selecting my covers, I'll never see the end of it because then people would ask me for the I don't know if it exists, but the Spectrum version or the Amstrad version, and then the MSX. You know, it's just it's it's I'll I'll spend a month or two months on the same not the same tune, but the different version of a tune if, uh, for say for same game. And uh, it's kind of, especially when I have a, a, a schedule, like a weekly schedule, it gets, it sometimes get overwhelming of just, um, of just having, having to do a cover. Like when I do the Amiga month or Mega Man month and all that, you know, the, by, the, by the end, I'm kind of, I'm kind of exhausted of, of Mega Man, you know, and I want to move on to something else and there's still one cover to do and it's just, it suffers inevitably so that's probably why i won't be doing monthly like themed months anymore because it's just uh it, it's just a bit too draining and then by the time i'm uh, i'm at the the second or third tune like something else creeps in my head and i'm i've lost focus like i'm like no but like now i really want to do this tune i still have this one to do it's just um that's kind of the way i work i'm afraid and my head is a bit of a mess and i just get obsessed by something suddenly so and uh, I have to drop everything else and, and just focus on that tune. So that's why the Amiga month, the last time I, I wasn't able to do four tunes. I only did three because I, I just got, um, yeah, another tune got stuck in my head halfway through. And then I could get, the only way I can get rid of it is by covering it. So if now I have to do another two covers before I get to that tune, it's just, it's going to sound like work. It's going to be just too draining. So yeah, that's, you know, it's, it, it doesn't, it doesn't mean I won't do it. It just means I can't. I can't promise I'll do it, and I can't tell you I, I will or won't do it. Um, that's the bottom line. Um, RGB Crafts. Uh, so there's a few video you can get some royalties paid or something. So sorry. Uh, so there are, f are a few videos you can get. I'd, I'm not sure I understand your question. Sorry. Um, Joey Wall, dude, how are you doing? Um, nice to see you again here. It's a pleasure to hear your voice today, sir. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you. Um, well, I wouldn't say that, but uh, thank you for making yourself accessible to us. Um, it's no no problem no well th thank you for coming here in the first place i mean i'm i'm, I'm the one who's grateful you know um andrew uh andrew <laughs> yeah agrees with uh, uh, what joey said but yeah, thank you um nico says this is cool <laughs> uh with a little game with my friend nico here um last night we we're in the discord we, we started talking in, in the third person uh made things much more complicated that they needed to be um chris randazo uh, chris nice to see you here dude chris runs the uh the um uh, stone age gamer uh podcast the geek with geek aid and uh, you you run a, a podcast as well on uh, vgm i forget the name i forget the name put the name in the uh, comments here but um uh, he's a good friend as well i had it on on the uh on one of those uh the video podcasts i did uh, an interview of chris a while back um yeah, we haven't met, but it's one of those uh, good inter internet friend that you end up having when you're, you know, constantly online. Um, really cool. Um, hey, Ali, I have two questions, but I'm uh, at work, so I can't stick around to hear your answers, uh, but I'm going to ask them anyway. Okay. Um, and then it goes away. Um, RGB Craft, hello, uh, Nico. Oh, they are saying hello to each other. Charles, uh, 2099. Please, Star Fox... Uh, for the super nintendo good sound psx adventure of lomax thanks <laughs> um uh chris <laughs> oh here is his questions oh, okay uh, <laughs> chris <laughs> why, are you, why are you so handsome i uh, don't know about that um how far off is some Mega Man tree love um 
yeah, at some point I'll do Mega Man. I want to finish off with the Mega Man uh, two first, and then I'll I'll, I'll tackle more Mega Man three. I've done some already. I, I had the uh, Doctor Wily uh, Mega Man three, and I had the uh, is the start and uh, weapon select uh, medley, uh, which was uh, interesting. Uh, Andrew uh, says our band is both trad and folk. Okay, so yeah, so it's it's yeah, good okay, tunes and songs. Uh, wife does tap dancing um, with a school here, so we've learned some jigs and reels. Although do some folk songs too, and cover some popular music. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I, I've uh, I've 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 played in a few bands like that. When I lived in the U.S. in in uh, in California, there was a quite a scene of uh, trad music. There is a small scene, but yeah, yeah, there was a. But everybody wanted to be in a band. That was the funniest thing. I always thought that was really funny. Everybody introduced themselves as, "Hi, I'm in a band," and uh, I was like, "Oh, yeah, good for you." I'm not. Um, <laughs> it's just really funny. But it was cool to see the enthusiasm for for Irish music. I didn't expect that in California. It was just really, uh, really cool. Um, and uh, I got to play. I got to play every almost every night there for for the small year I was there. I made some good friends. I ended up going back. Um, and meeting them and then recorded on uh, an album for a singer called Krista Birch uh, in in the US um, and very good we became very good friends she came here a few times and uh, and I was beside a man called Steve Foreman uh, who um, who had a studio on Venice Beach and Steve was a he was a Hollywood musician really like he played with so so many people at tambourine.net check out his website and see his CV like his He's played on films like uh, E.T. And, and Crocodile Dundee and that kind of thing. He's done percussions on that. And then he's, he's composed for the uh, BBC Orchestra in Scotland. I think he's quite, quite a serious studio uh, um, uh, musician and live musician. And uh, spent a lot of time in the studio there. And he's the one who actually just introduced me to different approaches to... <sighs> to well recording but also the approaches to because he did sound design as well he did a lot of uh, like sound effects for films and things like that and uh, so we'd, we'd, we'd stay late in the studio and steve was 60 at the time like and i wasn't in my 20s like there was quite a, a gap but I, i'd kind of met a kindred spirit really and uh would just go over i don't know like we'd listen to cds get high and uh, just kind of trip on different CDs, different sound, it would show me different techniques developed and that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, he, he's the one who sort of left this uh, idea in my head that like a, an instrument is just a convention. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tool, it's an instrument, but an instrument is just a, a, a formatted tool and that's been formatted to produce the same sound every time you pick it up. So it's convenient that way. But th what that means is that well it, pretty much anything can be an instrument uh used the right way you know this pack of cards well that that makes a sound which is you know a note or a series of notes so you can use that and exploit that in in, in some way um so it's it's just it, it got me to start experimenting and, and 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 discovering new sounds new way of creating sound and mixing stuff like these covers and using traditional instruments it's the most unlikely thing you know I, I would have expected to do but it's just really in interesting to see where you can bring them you know if you add tons of reverb to a mandolin or an, an, an echo and, and that kind of stuff like wh what does that do like what can you do with it or if you add phaser to a banjo or you know, things like that you know or if you experiment with panning I do that a lot just to get wider sounds um, it, it, yeah it just opened my eyes as to what an instrument is and and actually and forced me to look at an instrument outside its its cultural context so the banjo everybody every time somebody sees a banjo they, they want to go yeah you know that kind of stuff well i don't do that on my channel you know i don't do banjo music uh i don't do kind of bluegrassy kind of approach or any even bluegrass runs i don't do the those at all so it's just uh, it, it's just trying to take the, the instruments out of their cultural context and expand and, and and show how versatile they can be it's just fascinating like for the the previous uh, dr wiley cover i discovered something on the accordion like if i take as if you put that way in the back like you play the accordion you play the bass on it just a straight f fifth bass you use the, the fifth button uh you put that way to the right and then way to the left you use the same accordion but you play the chords chords like the the third you know minor major that kind of stuff chords on that 
And then you add effects on, on, on both, different effects at different sort of rates. So one has the uh, phaser, one has a, has a very light wow effect. Uh, and if you listen carefully, you can hear that kind of sort of climbing so wow, sort of effect in the background uh, that I, I do with the accordion. That's that's how it's achieved. Like an accordion would not sound like that on its own, but it just it's cool to experiment and build layers and add just try to have matching effects, you know, all that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, in in that respect, it's uh, it, it's really interesting to experiment with those instruments and and bring them out of their comfort zone and, and what people would expect of them. But I am rambling. I need to get back on track. Um, Nico, uh, RG, well, Nico is talking to RGB crafts. Um, fair enough. <laughs> and uh, yeah, okay. Uh, and you, <laughs> Andrew says uh, mandolin. Oh, that's your lineup: mandolin, bazooki, guitar, you bass, concertina, and piano. Uh, key at times. Yeah, fair enough. I love the concertina; it's such a cool sounding instrument. Um, I'm very, very bad at it, and still trying to learn. Uh, it's not. It, it it's not an easy one. I don't have as much time to uh, dedicate to learning a new instrument proficiently so i can i can play a couple of scales and and just do a few chords uh, but that, i think that's where it's gonna be for for the purpose of this channel we'll see maybe one day i'll be able to just uh, play a melody line on it properly and, and and use that but it's more likely it's gonna happen for the uh, for the piano accordion first uh, actually it's happened before i i, I started playing a lot more melodies on the uh, piano accordion so um so you've no uh, recording worth sharing yet uh but we're looking up to some live gig soon. Um, sorry about the song request. No, don't be sorry. There's, it's. I mean, that the 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 thing about the song request is that I is actually what got me started with this channel. And uh, I, I don't mean people stop making song requests. I, what I'm saying is I can't I can't promise. I can't you know even really acknowledge them but uh, it doesn't mean first that i don't check them and that i won't do it but no um, uh, and it doesn't mean that i, I don't want people just you know, i want people to stop making requests um so when i discovered smooth mcgroove i um i sent him an email and at this stage he had i think he had still already like he'd passed a million subscribers he, he, he was approaching two million subscribers so he was he was pretty big and uh, but I sent him a message on Facebook and I said hey I love what you do and you know wish you the best and blah 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 and uh, any any chance you do some Turrican and he replied he replied an hour after or something like that very quickly like this is somebody with almost two million subscribers you know and he said well thank you very much very kind words and I said uh, yeah Turrican is cool I'm not sure it's quite what I do and. And he, he said exactly what I just said, you know, I, I've, you know, I have a list and, and I need to stick to that and that kind of stuff. And I was like, if, okay, well, fair enough. And then it got me thinking, well, I, I play all these instruments. I have the equipment. I have some of the stuff. So, and uh, why don't I try? So that's, that's what happened. I did, I think the next the weekend after that, I, um, I, I did that Castlevania cover and, uh, People liked it, and yeah, that's that's what happened. Uh, I, it got me started. Sorry, my mouth and eyes are drying up for some reason. Um, <clears throat> only seems to happen when I do these. But it 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 probably wouldn't have happened if I hadn't made a request. I was still, I was still in in a consumer of uh, of YouTube and a consumer of videos at that stage. And it's only because he said he probably won't get to it uh, but he thought that the Tarakin material was cool but he probably won't get to it i was like well somebody has to and fuck it might, might as well be me then you know so i um, i did that castlevania cover to see first if i could do it and because castlevania was my um, one of my favorite tune and then i did something from the uh, wonder boy uh wonder boy tree and then i think the fourth fifth cover maybe was a was a Tarakin cover um, I want to redo these as well at some point because I want to do a. It's another project I have with Chris Uselbeck actually um, to do a, 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 a an album of covers of the of Turrican, but have it officially licensed by Chris Uselbeck. So we'll see, we'll see. We, he agreed in principle. It's just I, I'm the one who's going to have to do all the <laughs> work, obviously, and uh, you know it's been slow on that that respect. But he liked the idea. He's a fan. He's a Patreon as well. 
Um, it's really cool. He was one of my first Patreon. Just imagine that. I mean, you know, you're making music from somebody else. They f they found out and they they encourage you by you know sponsoring your channel. It's just it, it it blew my mind. That's actually what actually got me. That was very early. Like that was yeah, the first five or six covers. That's actually what got me to to just go okay. There's something there. Like if if this guy you know thinks it's cool and and is sponsoring the channel, I I, I gotta keep going. So. The, yeah, it's a little boost like that and little uh, incentives and uh, so don't uh, don't be sorry about requesting a song. You never know. Um you might decide to start your own uh, <laughs> cover channel. Um Fan Rose, can we get a sneaky peek at the song to be covered in your upcoming video? Uh no, you can't because I don't have anything yet. I have uh, I, I I've no recording yet and uh, and usually I keep that information anyway for, for Patreons. I, I tell them what I'm, I'm working on. So we, we know what the next tune is going to be, but that's that's uh, private, confidential information. <laughs> uh, uh, RGB Craft. Uh, RGB is talking to a lot of people here tonight. RGB Craft talking to Chris. Uh, probably there's something about his shade of grey beard or something. <laughs> that beard, if you look at the, um, the videos... When I started uh, back in 2014, my beard was black, it was jet black. Um, yeah, got all gray now. Um, I don't know. I don't feel stressed or anything like that. But clearly, clearly, I aged in four years more than I, I'd aged in the previous 40. So, um, yeah, interesting. Um, Nico, uh, <laughs> Nico's addressing himself as <laughs> the third person. Nico still did, does remember that was fun. Um, yeah, if folks, I, I encourage you to join the, the Patreon, Patreon chat as well. We we have, uh, well, I have a Patreon server, but is uh, Nico is an ad admin there, and uh, we have just threads on about pretty much everything. Like a lot of DIY stuff. It's actually a lot, there's a lot of technical stuff on uh, arcade repairs and. And repair like this yeah what, what is there nico i think we have uh, arcade uh pie stuff you know retro pie with emulation with a lot of stuff like that woodwork actually diy a lot of diy stuff um obviously some art and music and uh, instrument threads like there's actually quite a lot of threads and they're all uh, quite busy but it's a cool i, I like the i like the atmosphere there's a lot tons of very uh, sound uh, sound folks in there um nico and rgb craft are are, are, are are two members there um uh and uh, rgb crafts shows some of his uh cutouts and and uh, animation as well he does some really cool animation we do have a project together that's just it's it's been you know it's way down the line it's whenever we get it done we we, we have you know there's no pressure on this but uh hopefully it'll happen it'll be uh, it'll be cool um media glitch dude how are you doing um nice to see you here man um uh, boot LP, nice headphone Philips and um, Philips and uh, duct tapes. Uh, they uh, unfortunately they broke in uh, many places over the years, and uh, this is my this is my recording mic. This is my uh, mixing headphones. It's it's not great equipment, but it works. At least it works for me. Um, if you if you saw my setup, it's uh, as bare bone as any recording studio can be. Like I upgraded recently my. Um, my uh, console, my desk. Uh, let me. Uh, no, what am I doing? Uh, I upgraded in my uh, my uh, recording desk here with this. But before, I just had a small two-channel M track uh, audio interface. Uh, so that's it. And my uh, my mic is uh, is just this guy, really. Uh, and that's that's the channel there, uh, in a nutshell. That's my setup. So you don't need a big setup to to do videos and, and music, you know. Uh, that's as bearable as, as it can be. And, you know, that's an upgrade already. Uh, a friend of mine from work actually sent me this mic, and I was trying that before. Uh, this is, I uh, can't remember, uh, MXL uh, 770 uh, from... I forget, I can't read. There's lights in my, uh, in my eyes here. But... Um, um uh, it's a voice mic and i i wasn't uh, quite taken with it i have to say um it's okay but i mean this is a what is it jm 70 something like that uh it's quite a sh it's not it's an inexpensive uh, uh condenser mic but it's a uh, it's been doing a great job stop moving 
been doing a great job uh, over the years and it's still uh, it's still going well i do like the response uh, i keep uh, knocking this i do like the sound it has and the response i get and it's it seems to handle a wide variety like from percussions to uh to uh to f flutes and the strings and that kind of stuff so uh, i've had no issues with it and so i'm gonna keep that for a while maybe get a, a second one at some point uh just in case this one fails like i'm really at the point where i can start looking into backup stuff um which has been great so that you can see my my camera there for recording uh, the videos so um uh yeah be be still very bare bone equipment like i don't have mixing uh, speakers or you know studio setup and that kind of stuff um and luckily this is a small room so i don't have to worry about acoustics like um echo natural echo and that kind of stuff uh th there's none of that here and uh so yeah it's just uh i've, I've been lucky with my setup I, I i need very little um it's great uh it's zeppelin uh <laughs> ollie are you in or from ireland if so what is the irish whiskey of choice there um here in pittsburgh powers is my go-to anyway i absolutely love covers and, and your creativity with them um so i yeah i am in ireland i am not irish myself I, I was not born in ireland i was born in france and i moved to ireland when i was 21 uh, literally packed my bags uh, i'd met i'd met a girl um too but um packed my bags uh one day um i was done with uh, college and uh, I was uh, I was trying to get a, a year um, in Ireland, like do college, and just kind of see what happened. Uh, so I packed my bag and arrived in Ireland with just a yeah a backpack really, and uh, I scrambled for a while, and you know, and uh, yeah, eventually got a job and and decided to stay another year. And uh, and then at the end of that year, I'd realized it had been indeed five years. <laughs> and, uh, you know, here it's twenty-two years later, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm here and I've a house here and I'm married and you know, so um, yeah, kind of happened. But yeah, I've I've spent more time now in Ireland <clears throat> than in France, and I've I've been speaking English for longer than I've been speaking French. I do, I, uh, I last year I started doing a French podcast with some. Um, some friends called La Case Retro and uh, it's been interesting like it's been really really interesting because I, I I don't think I've lost a lot of my French I don't think I have but I've certainly lost some ease of uh, <sighs> yeah I'm not as at ease as I would have expected uh, I would be um, mind you I'm not exactly at ease with English either it's just uh, I, I, I talk rubbish in most all languages um but it's yeah it's funny i'm really at the point where it, at the stage where it's uh, it's it, things are slightly confusing because i i'm looking for my words a lot more when i, I speak french than uh, than when i speak english actually um and as you can hear like um, i don't speak english perfectly so uh, you can imagine yeah but it's it's been going okay and it's been interesting and it's um uh, it's a it's a podcast f about video games and we, we cover one video game but it's uh, usually we cover a video game and then we uh, we each have an area to cover so it's like somebody covers what the press uh had to say at the time and then somebody covers the uh, the universe the game is in or the, the or what the, the, the gaming context what the background was like what other games came out before and during that year and in that period uh, influences and things like that and then we cover obviously music and graphics and playability and gameplay and all that kind of stuff but it's uh it, it goes on for usually two three hours sometimes uh it goes quite in depth and it's really interesting and uh i've, I've had great laughs and uh, made new friends actually because there's a i think there's a rota of like a panel of uh, about 15 10 15 people there something like that so it, usually it's just four of us or five of us in one podcast so we take turns according to preference but it's uh, it's been cool i'm really really glad it used to be a podcast I, I i i would listen to myself so now being a member is is really really a quite a personal achievement for me um, and uh, yeah there you go la case that's what's called um I, I do repost some of their stuff on uh, on twitter so if you see some french stuff sometimes with funny um funny pictures like uh, caricatures of myself and the other guys that's what it is um charles 2099 um uh, your work and every and and very good great channel thank you very much um ice zeppelin and sorry if i messed up your uh, ethnic background 
just a dumb American here. <laughs> no, it's no problem at all. Um, uh, well, you, see, you don't know, you know. If you don't know, you don't know. That's that's what it is. Um, especially with me, like it's so kind of m- m- messed up and confusing. And some people can hear the French accent. Some people can't. Some people, well, m- m- most people can hear something, but they don't know why quite what it is like they go well it does sound irish but it's not really or there's something else there so my my voice confusing confuses a lot of people um and nico um nico has to go bye bye nico see you soon in the on the, the discord server um zand uh, zantrav uh, motovin Again, there you go. That's me uh, mispronouncing somebody's name. Uh, I wish I could listen to you, bro, but I'm uh, in class right now. Sorry about that. Or, yeah, you should be paying attention to um, the class. Uh, Vodka Gobalski. Hello. Hello from Russia, Ali. I must say that your music cover is very good and very nostalgic. Thank you very much. So cool that people are listening from Russia. Um, All the way there. Um, Really, really cool. There was a guy um, a while back. I think he was in the... the Kachamka area of, uh, of Russia. It's one place I'd love to go and explore. It's supposed to be stunning. Um, uh, Christoph, uh, make cover of the SNK game. Uh, what? Uh, Brian Mitchell, dude, how are you doing? Um, hello, Ali and chat. Sorry I'm late. No, 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 not at all. No worries. Um, the mu- uh, Christoph, the music is really great. What SNK game though? Um, um, yeah, there's, there's many, many uh, games by SNK. You'll have to tell me more than that. And m- most likely, as I've said previously, you know, requests, I, I can't really take the take them on. Um, Ryan Hunter, uh, what's up, Ali? How's your day so far? Great, actually. I've been uh, well. I'm tired. <laughs> I've been lifting. I've been. Uh, um, we we've had since we moved here bought the house about ten years ago now. But there was a big stumps. Somebody had cut some of the trees because they were leaning too uh, too much over the house and you know it was a bit of a hazard and creating a lot of uh, dampness and and shade so uh, uh, i've planted a few trees somewhere else in our um, uh, um, garden there but those stumps big just big pine stumps have been i've been there for the past 10 years and uh, well this uh, this week it was off and I, because i decided i needed to take them out so i've been uh, today i've been just finishing it been wrestling with the uh, giant stumps wood stumps um tree stumps and uh, and it's been tough because i have to dig around the, uh, the 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 stump and then cut the roots one by one and then try to pry the thing uh, off by hand uh, on my own because i don't have a digger or any uh, you know any machinery so uh, yeah quite it was quite tough you can see like i'm, I'm fucked <laughs> really tired but i promised i would do uh, one of these chats but uh, I'm glad it's done. But it was six of them. Like they're massive, massive yokes. Uh, I'll post a picture actually tomorrow on uh, on uh, Twitter of what they look like or Instagram of what they look like. It's just uh, yeah. I feel like it was great training for judo and groundwork. I'll tell you that much. Um, that's the the toughest fight I've uh, ever had. Um, Fabio, uh, <laughs> Brazil here. Um, Brazil was here before you, dude. There was somebody else from Brazil uh, before. Um, before it was really early on in the chat so brazil was here all the time um leo nobody from nowhere um since you have a lot of uh, side banter your patreon created several solid friendship across the globe i really enjoyed uh, it, it really has evolved in so many ways um yeah yeah that's that's very true like i've actually through the channel actually befriended a lot of uh, a lot of people and uh, actually people i've never met but people I can consider personal friends so it's really cool it's it's still new to me like I, I didn't I always assume internet and social media was just uh, as shallow as the screen in front of you but uh no I've, I, I've had really cool conversation private conversation with a, a lot of uh, folks um yeah yeah you're uh, you're right like it was it was great if, if anything the, the channel like if I stopped the channel tomorrow I would obviously have the pleasure of having done all these covers but also met uh, a lot of people like it's uh, it's an added perk i didn't expect and it, it's great it's really cool um uh, let's go just uh, greetings ali brazil here <laughs> uh, brazil is here again um uh, fabio jurassic park 
any yes stage one please uh, i assume that's a request but like i said um uh, don't do requests nobody from nowhere and um, again I, I repeat myself but i can't I, I just can't take on requests i get like that it's going to be about 20 requests here in the chat um so obviously you know i i, I just i just can't um take them into account most likely in fact most likely if you have a request most likely it's already in my um, list of tune i want to cover so it's just a matter of when i get to it and uh, i've had i've had arguments i've had fights with two people that i had to block because uh, they, they just assumed they could request a song and uh, and then started giving out to me because i hadn't done their song um and uh, yeah it, it got very nasty and I, I had to block two people uh but that's over the lifetime of the, of the channel um but yeah so you know, it's, it always walk walk on eggshells when people request stuff because it's uh there's that in uncomfortable kind of sort of a, a premise where where you know if you if you don't do the request it means you don't like the song can you hear my dog barking outside yeah if you don't do the request it means you don't like the song or you're ignoring their request and that kind of stuff because it's not the case it's just like i get too many i get too many it's most likely in my list already and uh, yeah if i start acknowledging or or taking on requests i'll i'll be working for somebody else and that's i don't want to that do that with the channel um you know working for me and just having fun really that's what the bottom line is uh, nobody from nowhere um so when will you get the uh, mrs involved <laughs> she's always a background lurker would she should be willing to do a video um uh, with you or would she be against that she is very much against that she doesn't like uh, to be on camera she uh, yeah she she absolutely uh, do not want to be a ca on camera i've asked her actually i've asked her because we d we have great chats and the uh, the um the mother forecast uh, uh channel um sort of i suppose died you know this it, it's now it's where i put these videos after they're done I, I don't put them on the main channel i put them on the mother forecast uh the mother focus podcast uh, uh channel and uh but i was i did ask her and i asked her regularly you know would you like to do a podcast just the two of us just having a chat reacting to I don't know just looking at, at the internet and current stuff and current event because she she always had a has a funny or cool or off or <coughs> or spot on angle on on all that kind of stuff and uh, so we've great banter and great chat together but no she doesn't want to do that she's she's very uh, super self-conscious on camera so she could be fine and then i i i, I press the button camera's on and she, now she's she's frozen and she's super self-conscious it's the weirdest thing but that's what it is so yeah so i try to uh, on my other channel every now and then every time she's passing i i, I try to uh, put her on the spot uh and uh, she always finds a way out um andrew uh love what you're saying about experimenting with sounds and instruments oh yeah that was a while back so that's what i was saying guys i'm, I'm always you know way behind <coughs> in answering your questions but um uh, uh you're inspired cool have to run but thank you so much for being uh, live enjoy your evening um, likewise enjoy your day or well the rest of your day it's not probably quite the evening where you are but do thank you for stopping by um we'll talk soon um you're a pakomov question about not about music do you use crt nowadays and what do you think about this technology i bought a couple of pro crts display and was so amazed by the quality color and no lag um yeah no i use uh, i use a lot of crts here this guy that's a big um, uh, a big pvm um, mo broadcasting monitor so i use those <coughs> um i use those to um to test some of the boards i fix and that kind of stuff i like that i have an lcd as well uh, if i if i film a cover because uh, a repair for my other channel because uh, uh, because um otherwise i get those refresh uh, rate issues because i just film with the phone um but check out the uh, the 8-bit manchild it's my second channel where i do all those repairs and i do repair crts and um, in fact i have because i have arcade machines and that kind of stuff so uh, i i have to re repair a lot of crts and uh, i have uh, i've been on an arcade raid recently and i picked up a lot of crts that are i don't know about 10 <laughs> crts that will need some attention at some point so i'll be doing a lot more uh, crt repairs on that channel as well but yeah no i love the i love crts i love the, the yeah well obviously there's a nostalgia factor for me 
uh, I have nothing against LCDs, by the way. I think they're they're great. And uh, it's the funny thing, you see, because w- when when I was a kid, we like CRTs were what well, well, what we had to deal with. But every we the goal was to get towards crisper and sharper image, and and finer and more more HD and that kind of stuff. So it always strikes me as funny that people want to revert back to those just basic CRTs where the pixels are somewhat blurry because, well, it, it was against everything we were trying to get at the time. You know, it wasn't the feel we wanted. So when we got um, uh, LCDs that could display those nice blocky pixels, actually, we were, we were happy with that. Uh, and now it's the opposite way. People want to revert back to those CRTs, including myself. I, I'm, I, I do like the glow of a CRT. You can't get that from a, an LCD. Uh, not to that extent, and there's a, obviously there's no nostalgia factor, and the, the yeah, the, I, yeah, I like CRTs, um, and I'll be fixing a lot of CRTs in the future on the other channel. So do check that actually if you get a chance. Uh, that channel is actually doing okay. It's been a, it goes to uh, troughs, but at the moment the uh, subscription rate and uh, and views is the highest it's it's been. So it's really cool. There's not a lot, but it's still uh, it's still cool. Like it's uh, it's on its way to. to Five thousand subscribers, so I didn't expect that at all. So it's really, really, really uh, good to see that people are naturally interested in all those um, boards. Like you see the board here. Like what is it? Uh, I think this is. Can't remember what this is, but um, I have a pile of board to fix. I have about thirty, forty boards I need to fix, and then I have old computers as well and consoles. So I have a lot of stuff to go through. Uh, so that channel is uh, future is uh, is relatively bright in, in terms of content uh joey wall uh, i wanted to ask you what you drank too but i thought it was a little off topic oh actually somebody asked about whiskey earlier on um uh who was that but anyway well but i drink I, I i like jameson or paddy's whiskey um uh as to what i drink now well it's it's water <clears throat> uh, I need that because my obviously my uh, you can hear it already my uh, my <laughs> my uh, uh, um, voice is strained. Um, uh, Pete, mm, oh man, I'm sorry, I'm gonna butcher your name. Uh, I, I'm sorry, uh, Pete. Uh, uh, is that a Dutch name? Is it P- uh, Peter? Uh, evening. Uh, how is it on the other side of the pond? Um, it, it's well Wh- which pond are we talking about though um are you are you in are you in america then uh or in uh, in south america uh where are you from actually uh it's uh i'm not familiar with that name uh danny oh danny how are you doing dude uh playing jedi fallen order and remembering ollie getting me hype for the force unleashed back in the day that's right yeah i remember that game that game was the reason i got the xbox to start with i wanted the i wanted to play force unleashed uh, how is it is it any good um, i want to actually pick it up sometime around christmas when i've uh, yeah that's probably when i'll play it i'll have a bit more time to play it if i if i pick it up now i'll never get a a, a cover done until <laughs> the end of the year so <laughs> i uh uh, I, I want to do a few more covers before I, I get back into playing. I haven't played in a couple of months now. Um, uh, Pierce, um, where did your fella, where did you yellow little friend uh, go? Uh, oh, you mean Simon, the the puppet? Um, he's in a in a cupboard here somewhere. Um, RGB craft. Oh, today live stream is lively. Uh, I can't even see nobody from nowhere attending. <laughs> Indeed, he was here. Um, Iced Zeppelin, thank you for your response. It's great to know about your French and Irish history. Still would like to know uh, the whiskey of choice there in Ireland. I will continue to share your cover here in Pennsylvania. Yeah, um, well, my whiskey of choice is probably Jameson. Uh, I do like Paddy, but Jameson, I like Jameson very much. Um, as to the whiskey of choice in Ireland, I suppose it depends. But Jameson is pretty popular, though. That's what you'd get in a in a bar if you ask for a whiskey. Usually, they'll, they'll give you a Jameson. That's nice. I, I like it. I like. It. I'm not a whiskey expert, by the way. I just, yeah, I just like to. I, I like a drink, but yeah, I'm not a connoisseur or anything like that. Like, if you put different scotches and and whiskeys and you know bourbons and brandies then in front of me, uh, I'm not gonna tell you what's what. I'm not really don't have a, a an advanced taste like that. But uh, I I do like um I do like Jameson. 
Uh, King Edward Retro, greetings from Tennessee in the US. Absolutely love listening to your music. Thank you very much, dude. Uh, thank you for uh, for coming in. Um, yeah, it's a busy, busy live stream here. Um, uh, usually we get like, you know, I don't know, an average of 10, 14 people, but it's been a, a consistent 20 here. Uh, really cool to see. Um, Zitray17, uh, can you please do an official Mega Man to full album for Spotify. Um, yeah, I, my plan is to do an album for for the end of the year, like so have a, a video <coughs> with all the uh, tunes from Mega Man 2. So that's my goal. That's why I've, I've redone the um, Dr. Wiley tune. Now, Spotify, is it's funny because um, I usually wait until I have a full album. Re so whenever I do a tune, I release it on Bandcamp. And then I wait until I have a full album to release it on uh, on on Spotify and iTunes and all the other, other platforms. Uh, to do that, I have to go to a company called Samdrop. They have been really, really good. The last album, though, had been a problem because it, it got stuck somewhere in the process. And... Uh, and I just could not get it really it to, to, to release and it lasted a good six months. So people were asking me where it was and I was like, well, I submitted it and it got approved. So it must be there. Um, turned out it, it got stuck in the process. So I, I only got the last album uh, on uh, on Spotify and iTunes and all these platforms a couple of weeks ago now. Um, and and SoundUp has been stellar in, in doing support and, and assisting me with it. Um, uh, so yeah, no, they've been very good with that. So I have no issue with them at all. It's just one of those things that happen. So um, as soon as I have, in this case, because it's going to be a full album already, I will do my best to have it, you know, within a week or two in, in on Spotify and uh, and uh, and other platforms. But you know, there might be some delay. But yeah, around Christmas, New Year's, hopefully. Um, it w I'll be able to release it on the, on those platforms. Keep in mind, I do have to pay for licensing fees as well, so it's about a tenner per track. So, you know, it's 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 gonna cost me about a hundred. Like depending on how many tracks, it's like it's a hundred and fifty dollars to two hundred dollars um, uh, to release the album on uh, on platforms like that. So it depends on the cash flow as well, and you know all that kind of stuff. So uh, usually, usually I, I wait until I've sort of made the revenue from Bandcamp. So I, I get the money from Bandcamp to pay for the um, licensing fees uh, for for Spotify, iTunes, Deezer, Google, yeah, and, and YouTube Music as well. So uh, yeah, there's always some delay, and th the reason is it's natural delay, and then too is it's it's money. Obviously, I, I have to pay for that. So um, RGB Craft noob question: Where do you get all those arcade cabinets? Um, that one you got crazy taxi to function is super cool. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I got a crazy uh, taxi. Well, it's a Jumbo Safari cabinet, and uh, I will be converting it to crazy taxi. But I got it running, and I put a crazy taxi cart in it. It's a Naomi system, so it, it accepts carts for that system. And crazy taxi is one. Um, where did I get it? Well, I was part of an arcade raid. In fact, on the Eight Bit Mansion channel tomorrow. I've released it to um, early view, uh, you know, Patreons and and uh, subscribers to the channel. But tomorrow I'll be releasing the uh, the first video of that arcade raid. Uh, so the first time I go to explore, it gets very Indiana Jones because I have to climb over stuff and it's in a warehouse full of uh, <coughs> old uh, uh, amusement stuff and there's arcade machines there. There's all sort of stuff. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, do that. It's a free plug to my other channel. But just go subscribe to it and I'll, I'll release the video. So I show where I get those machines in particular. But in general, it's just word of mouth. And once you have a foot in, and especially in my case, I think people get to see that, you know, I can fix all these boards and I can get, you know, technical if I need to and, and get them running properly. And I'm not really a reseller, you know. So uh, uh, usually I get in, on, on, I get in on on whenever somebody has a lead or as a tip or something like that to let me know, you know. So it, it's been it's been great. I'm, I've been very fortunate, and um, yeah, it's so I, I've I've been able to get a, a good few arcade machines. I think I have fifteen machines now, and um, and those machines were cheap. I mean, you that's well, I get them cheap anyway because that's how I get them. You know, it's. Uh, but yeah, they, they were like the the crazy taxi was a hundred euros, something like that. Yeah, so yeah, of course I had to get it. I mean, I didn't have the room for it. I had to put it in my uh, one of my other sheds. But it just uh, 
I couldn't leave it behind. You don't you don't leave a cab like that behind for a hundred euros. You know, <laughs> um, I didn't have a hundred euros to spend on it, but that's another topic. But uh, yeah, so it's just word of mouth, and then being in the circle after a while. Like I've been doing this for a few years, and and not just not just liking and collecting stuff, but uh, you know, actively fixing them and fixing fixing them for friends as well. So you know, I I don't. It's not a a, a business or service I offer, but if a friend is stuck with a board they really like well you know send it to me i'll see what i can do like if it's not too involved or or if you want to pay for the parts i'll 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 sh I'll, sh I'll, I'll, I'll fix your board usually it's eight bit boards i can do those when you get into 16 bit boards i i struggle a lot more but uh, eight bit stuff i'm confident usually Provided there's not too many uh, custom stuff as well, custom ICs and, and things like that. But um, so a lot of the recent uh, repairs on the channel were for favors for friends, you know. And uh, that's how I got on, you know, one lead and another one recently. I got a, a, a haul of about 20 arcade boards recently. There was like a, a Rally X and a Ghost and Goblin board in there. Again, it was 100 euro for for all the boards there's two naomi systems uh motherboards uh there was uh that um resident evil well no it was biohazard code Ver veronica the arcade game for naomi as well um so it was a working card for that as well uh what, was, what else was there an arcanoid board uh there was a, yeah a lot of stuff i forget exactly what was there um shaolin road um anyway just stuff like that uh, uh, another board so it was cool um, it's cool um yeah it's just word of mouth knowing people after a while you you get in on secrets and, and locations and leads but yeah check out the uh, 8 bit manchet channel tomorrow i'll have, the, I'll have uh, that uh, video out about the uh, recent raid i was in uh pete i'm actually amazed how much gear you even get uh here in the lowlands the second market is dead as a dodo um yes yeah, it's funny it's just I, I have been very lucky. You're absolutely right. It's just uh, I, I can't explain it quite myself. It's just I don't know. I, 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 people have trusted me with. People have given me a lot of stuff as well, and uh, they, they see that you know I, I I'll take care of it. I'll repair it. I'll get it running, and if they want it back, I'll give it back to them. It's just, but it's just um, yeah, just, yeah. I got trusted with a lot of old stuff like that. Been given a lot of stuff um it's great i have actually I, I, the, the flea market the car boot sale yeah, and the, you know the, all this that kind of stuff even the uh second hand shops like the charity shops and thrift stores and all that have dried up drastically in the last year and a half and i've stopped going because you know for before that even for for six months a year i couldn't find anything so um I've, I've stopped going to those that market has dried up and people have copped on that you know th there had been deals and uh, and even the owners now kind of know what they they have when they get a game but like recently i found a, a shadow of the colossus in a in a, in a thrift store for like a, a euro you know it's the uh, the cardboard thing with all the cards and that kind of stuff so i mean <coughs> there's still stuff to get and ireland is a small place like i've been scouting those uh, charity shops for a long long time there's still some of them that aren't frequented at all so whenever they get something it's there for a long while so there's still stuff to find but uh it's getting harder it's getting harder for sure and uh, I, i've just been lucky i think that's what it is and and consistent in looking as well i, I used to have a a route like coming back from work i'll do a detour and just check all the shops like once a week and uh you know t if i had to go somewhere I'll, I'll look where the charity shops or thrift stores were on the way um i try to schedule my uh, my travels that way so yeah there's a bit of logistics involved in planning but um i think i do think i've been i've been lucky um Gunnar70, dude, how are you doing? Um, I can't stay long, but I want to say hi and congratulate you for all the great stuff you do. Thank you very much, dear. Um, hope you're well, uh, but I am, yeah, I'm tired, but uh, I'm good. Um, uh, Pete, uh, oh, I just say mouse. Oh, ma <laughs> okay, <laughs> mouse. I, I, that's what I'll call you now, mouse. Um, uh, Thomas Rainier. Uh, the best retro music creator ever, blessed. Thank you very much, dude. Um, uh, I, like, I, there, there's some very good uh, retro music creators uh, there, but thank you very much. Um, 
Mouse says yes, he's Dutch. <laughs> Gunnar70, oh my god, uh, I must play Fallen Order, yes, me too, but um, I, yeah, I left you wait a while. Uh, Danny Shields, I'm assuming you're talking about uh, Fallen Order there, Danny. Uh, it's great so far, Metroidvania style with Dark Soul influences. It's very, uh, very, very authentically Star Wars in atmosphere and characters. That's great, that's great. I did like Battle, it was a Battlefront that was out was la last year or the year before. I did actually like the solo, solo, um, uh, uh, adventure on this there might be uh will will they do a dlc with the new film hopefully they will that was great because they did one with the previous film that was actually uh it was free dlc it was cool i know the uh multiplayer and all that was plagued with uh, all this uh, loot box stuff and contro controversy but the the solo campaign was actually pretty cool i enjoyed it it was stunning yeah really really happy with the, the game so i'm looking forward to this one but i'll have to wait a little bit um uh tom uh, thomas rainia um i love retro music dude keep going please i will do it. no problem nostalgia nerd is here or was here because some delay in the me um, answering the chats but dude thank you very much for stopping by if you're still here i think you should release an album on cassette <laughs> that's not a bad idea actually uh, people have asked me about a uh, vinyl release but I think if I was going to do something it'll, like that, physical release, it will probably, well, first it'll probably be a CD, and and if I did something quirky like that, it'd probably be a cassette. I think a cassette would make a lot more sense than vinyl, uh, at least f for me. I, I still don't understand this um, thing people have for vinyl, just, I, I don't hear it myself, but then I have old man ears, so, uh, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I never, I never got the nostalgia that people have for vinyl, but a cassette is a great idea. Actually, I didn't think about that, but that's a good point. Uh, but thanks for stopping by here, dude. It's good to see you here, uh, Charles. Uh, Twenty nineteen. How many musical instruments do you, do you play? Um, you play a lot. Come visit Brazil. <laughs> Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, how many instruments I, 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 I own? I wouldn't say I play all of them not in the sense that I, I would be proficient in them but like the pipes i can't say i play the pipes i own a pipe and i can knock out a tune whenever i, I need to and I, I need to really practice on it but uh, how many instruments do i have i i have no idea dude and um, i have all these here on the wall like all the strings instruments um let me grab this do, 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 do. Yeah, I have all these, uh, one, two, three, four, whatever, I'm not going to start counting, I have all these here, and then I have all my, uh, all the stuff here, like percussion bits and drums and the concertina, and uh, I have all that here, the accordion is over here, and then I have stuff in storage, stuff that I, I still have either to fix, or I haven't had the chance to experiment, or haven't had need, you know, a need to, to experiment with. Um, I have keyboards as well. Like I, yeah, I just have a lot of stuff. Sorry, just gonna disconnect this. Um, I just have a lot of stuff like that um, in my uh, in my attic. Um, I, how many actual instruments I have? I don't know. Probably a hundred. Probably more. Um, yeah, I have, I have a lot of stuff. <laughs> it's partly why I've been doing a clear out as well recently in my uh, retro gaming stuff. Just keeping the essential games. All the NSX collection you see, like here. That's all msx here and here and there's a second level where it's all amiga stuff so i'm, I'm keeping a lot a lot of these obviously all the stuff that people give me it's it's in a, a storage now but um you know but it, it's just uh yeah i've been i had to clear a lot of stuff i need to make room for more musical instruments i want to get i want to get um just more odd stuff like the uh, i have the oud here that somebody sent me i want to get a who are the gordy at some point um some uh, old kind of medieval instruments i'd like to get like bowed and string stuff um just to experiment with them and see and i can use them in the cover but um, that stuff is expensive so hence the, the clearing out selling some stuff to make room and uh, raise a bit of cash to get these things like a horde gordy is going to set me back about about 600 for a very cheap model so it's it's yeah uh, we'll see but um yeah hopefully i'll, I'll get one in time <coughs> excuse me uh victory don't forget soundcloud no i don't put anything on soundcloud i don't have any control over content on soundcloud 
and uh, I, I don't like the platform at all never never really used it so yeah sorry about that i know some people love soundcloud um i i because i you know I'd, I'd have to again i'd have to pay for an account to upload in soundcloud and yeah I, I just don't get i don't understand this platform at all i don't get the the logic behind all this love behind for soundcloud i don't get it and then yeah I, I, I have no control over revenue or anything like that it's not a it's actually not a creator friendly platform um anyway that's a small rant over uh you are a uh thank you for your answer all the best to you subscribe to the 8, min, uh, 8 bit man shed oh that's cool thank you uh ryan hunter love all your covers especially all castlevania monster boy and the uh, curse kingdom and our type um grazie from rome italy cool somebody from italy um i'm really sorry uh, wow well, um <clears throat> Victory greetings for uh, from Germany. Um, oh, you were asking about SoundCloud. Uh, yeah, but uh, cool. So we have people from everywhere here tonight. It's really, really, really cool. Um, yeah, but SoundCloud again to answer your stuff. No, it's it's just not a platform I use. Um, I don't know. I never warmed to it. Never, never got the uh, logic of uh, of that platform. Anyway, uh, RGB Craft. Thanks. F um, thank you for reminding me. I'm um, subscribed to your other channel, but on my personal profile, not this one. <laughs> Gotta fix this. Thanks for that. No, no worries. Um, Zstray17, uh, in regards to Spotify questions, what's the best way to get you money, donate, buy merch? Uh, on Spotify specifically, I, I, I'm i not sure. Um, see, I, I don't control the, Spotify, the Banjo Guy Ali Spotify account. It's managed by Sounddrop. Uh, so they created that account for me on my behalf and all that. So uh, I suppose listening to the <laughs> tunes give me some uh, some very residual revenue. But actually, all the streaming services put together bring out m more money than YouTube does. You know, YouTube is probably the least uh, efficient uh, revenue generating platform. Um, uh, well, at least it generates some. But uh, so yeah, Spotify, all those platforms probably you know generate a lot more um but in regards to uh, supporting the channel in general well this this patreon there is uh there is the now youtube um membership you can have the option to do that it should be a join button on the uh, on the main page um there's uh there's um uh, what is it? well there's all the uh, all the there's this i make hats now uh these are really cool actually because these are um look at that it's it's weaved in sorry it's all uh, kind of stitched in in the <laughs> in uh, in the fabric these are really cool a friend of mine uh, well a, a twitter um buddy uh, did this for me it's from my main design obviously from the intro we uh, we simplified the design and then we went through a few iterations for to vectorize it so the uh, teespring would accept that so the, it's available on teespring there should be a link in most of my videos like if in the description or under the video, if your country accepts it, there should be uh, like merch stuff, uh, t-shirts and that kind of stuff. And that's the latest one. Like, and I have an 8-bit manchet one, but the uh, the caps is the latest one. I think they look really cool. I'm going to wear these for all the videos now. Um, makes sense, right? But um, yeah, look at that. I'm just really happy with the quality, actually. And I wanted to get a few samples before I did a, a video on it. And then I forgot to do a video because I'm not, you know, merch driven, really. But it's just cool to have. So yeah, there's all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, if you want to help the channel, uh, what else is there? I think that's it. It's quite a lot already. Uh, and then watching the videos, obviously sharing them and that kind of stuff. Um, uh, Mouse. By the way, the Bayou Billy uh, cover has been on repeat here the last week <laughs> once again. <laughs> so it's, it's dead cool, man. Yeah, that that cover, that cover, uh, like it disappears for a while and then. Uh, you know one one month i get so much so many views on it it's just it's the cover that keeps on giving people discover it in batches and uh, it does well and then goes back in the in the shadow for a while and it does well again it's just it's, it's so funny it's been interesting to uh, to see this cover it didn't do well when it was released it actually underperformed but it's been it's been just consistently 
performing like again and again um through times it's it's really interesting to see the i rarely spend time on, on statistics but stuff like that just baffles me i'm like why why is this month people are just finding the bio billy channel and they're not in the previous month and that kind of stuff um nobody from nowhere hey pete the bio billy track is what brought me to holly's channel great cover oh really i didn't know that leo um or maybe you said no, I can't remember. No, I, I didn't realize it. It's cool. Yeah, it's a cool cover. I actually used for that those, those the slide chords uh, effects. Um, it's a technique I learned from a guy called. Uh, it's Irish um, a guitar player. Uh, can't forget his name now. But uh, um, who was doing that really in the early two thousand, and uh, it was quite a revolution for Irish music because it it just brought that rhythmic r rhythmical and because the guitar traditionally was just used for harmon harmonic accompaniment you know just playing chords and that kind of stuff and now with this guy who said oh no no, no i'm gonna use that as a rhythmic instrument the guitar is a percussion instrument uh let me show you how and he did all these kind of very very rhythmic uh, chord progression and, and and slides and effects on the on on the on the on the guitar uh, so I transpose that to the, the bazooki. It does require solid, like yeah, a right hand strumming technique, and it's not an easy thing to do, uh, uh, especially in the length of a song. But it's just it's quite effective when you master it because it's just uh, you get that super percussive feel from the guitar, like especially for an intro. It just it just grabs it grasps you like straight away. Like it's a really really cool effect. I'm, I'm fond of it. I should use it more actually. I really should use it, use it more. Um, uh, I've lost my uh, track here. Uh, uh, somebody with a Russian name. I'm not going to be able to pronounce it. <laughs> Dude, I'm really sorry. But uh, hello, do you play modern games? And what is your favorite console? Um, I Yeah, I have... Uh, well, I have a PS4 and I have a, a Switch here. Uh, f favorite console? I don't think I have a favorite console. I, I don't... <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't discriminate um, <laughs> in that sense. I did, I, I got a switch this summer. Um, I'm very late to the party, but um, I, I got a switch this summer and I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed the format and the platform. I use it mostly on the screen or um, we're going on holidays in a couple of weeks. I'll be bringing the switch with me because it's just, it's really, really tidy little system. And uh, right now I, I haven't played in a couple of, in a good month, but um, uh, the last game I played was uh, Hollow Knight, and I need to get back into it. Great, great little game, uh, and I want to uh, I want to get Fallen Order um, around Christmas uh, at some point. Um, Lick, uh, love your music on Wonder Boy Tree. Thank you very much. That was a that was a blast to do. It's still an experience I'm I'm very fond of having done that uh, Wonder Boy stuff. I still have my uh, my Wonder Boy or Monster Boy, sorry, uh, poster here. Let me show you. There you go to send me that uh, just big frame poster. I don't think that's available anywhere. It just uh, I was at the launch party and they gave me they gave me a bunch of mercs like a hat and t-shirts and that kind of stuff I, and you know other things. But uh, uh, oh yeah, I had a hoodie, Monster Boy uh, hoodie as well. That was cool. But that poster and I got it framed and it's lovely here. Um, really happy. Loved the game as well. I think and and I'm you know I I didn't. Well, I suppose I, I played a part in the game, but I have, I have no fin financial vested interest in the success of the game, but I, I really thoroughly enjoyed the game. And I think they did probably the best tribute to the series that they, they could do. It's 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 fantastic. Um, uh, Mouse, I only get heaps of spam via SoundCloud. Yeah, uh, there's that too. Yeah, there's that too. Uh, Vampire MSX, uh, here's another fellow from the uh, Discord server. Keep it short, my question, are you French or Irelandian? I've answered that before, dude. You should have been here, but I'm French. Um, um, how many instruments do you play? Um, again, I've, I've sort of answered that, and I don't know. I don't know how many I own and uh, I, I, how many I play. It depends what you mean by play. I mean, I can I, I play a lot of string instruments. I, I, you know, I'll be able to confidently play almost anything on it um i can play the flute like can i play the accordion i don't think i'm an accordion player i can i can tinker and get a few things out of it uh bagpipes i don't think i'm a bagpipe player at all that it, it, this one will require more practice whenever i use the black pipe i really have to practice and rehearse and 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 
you know spend a lot of time um practicing it so yeah it depends what you mean by play uh, how many i own like i said earlier probably 100 but i i really don't know <laughs> i have a lot i have a lot here in this room i have a lot uh in uh, in my attic and uh, lots of stuff in storage as well and i, I still want to get more um I, I, the thing of all the things i collect instruments is probably the, the one I, I collect most but you know instruments are pricey pricey things like my bazooki for example is about god if i want to get one like that now from the same maker it's going to cost me two grand at least at least two grand my banjo is about a grand and a half uh so yeah y you know when you when you want quality like you have to pay the price for it um th that said you know i started the channel with a very very cheap banjo like it was uh what was it i think it was 80 pounds at the time it was the cheapest one in the shop uh and it served me well and i think when did i change when did i get the new one i can't remember which exact cover but um yeah, it, it changed the sound as well on the channel. But before that, it was still perfectly, I think, acceptable to some extent. Uh, you can do a lot of magic in post-processing as well. So you don't need top quality instruments. Uh, the reason I got a, a, the Bazooki um, made, it was back in 99, is because I was doing a lot of live stuff and playing in, in duets or uh, uh, um, trios, you know, just to... So I, I needed to get probably the, the best sound I could get out of an instrument. So th that's when you need to invest in a, a high quality instrument because there's an audience, there's very little um, uh, acoustic distractions in a room when you play in that, in that context. So you, you need a solid, good instrument. If you're playing on YouTube and if you're playing uh, uh, over on, on layers, like I have 20 layers, 40 sometimes, <clears throat> of different instruments and you can correct a lot of stuff in post-processing you will you don't need as good quality instruments you just need an instrument that says especially for a string instrument uh that that stays in tune throughout the the length of the uh, the scale other than that you you don't need the best tonal uh, tonal response for, for from that instrument you can correct that afterwards uh gadget uk hi hi dudes gadget uk is one of my uh, um uh, fellow repair tech um uh, channels here um uh and i'm also a patreon on his uh on his uh page as well i encourage you to do that uh gadget uk actually uh, you know recently had what well, was forced uh, pretty much to go uh, full time into his youtube endeavor so uh, i joined his uh, patreon campaign there to um to help and uh, if you like repair stuff and uh, an arcade and computers and vintage stuff being repaired i encourage you to check his channel subscribe and if you can maybe help him out a bit as well um uh ed larry how oh, dude how are you doing um ed was my first um my first uh um channel member on this channel um on the uh on the banjo guy ali channel um so thank you very much you can see oh, i can see that's the first time i can see your uh your little member badge <laughs> thing that's really cool that's the first time i see it um that room looks familiar yes you've been here um, I, ed actually bought a a, a cab for me recently it's a, a one of those poker cabs so is uh i got two poker poker cabs from that uh, arcade raid recently you'll see that tomorrow it's on the channel and uh and uh i couldn't keep them because i don't have the room I, I wanted to convert them i wanted to convert one into tetris and one into uh i wasn't sure yet either our type or um uh um, ghost and goblins because right now i have a kung fu master cab and i have the ghost and goblin board in there because i wanted to play ghost and goblins but i'd like to have a dedicated cab the only problem is i don't have any room for them so um i had to uh, make a harsh decision and and just uh, sell them back again I, and i sold them for the price i got them at and not trying to make a profit but it was cool uh it was cool to um to see you again dude um thanks for stopping by and thanks for for the support joining the uh the the member channel uh thing um, anyway, uh, Guillermo Lucas, hello, hello. Um, Mar, 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 I don't know what that is. Uh, love your music, especially the NES Batman cover. Thank you very much, dude. Yeah, these are cool. The, um, what is it? Is it the uh, Sunsoft? There were some Sunsoft games, weren't they? That, it's got that distinct kind of bass music type of stuff uh, ever heard of play of a SNES game called seven saga has a solid uh, soundtrack you might enjoy um i i will check it out um 
a gadget you can gotta get me one of those caps <laughs> yeah i love it i know yeah i love i i I'm super fond of the cap i've been wearing it ever since like it's just uh I, i'm gonna need to order a few more samples because this one is gonna get uh, destroyed really really quickly uh, and larry um where do we get the cap so yeah in the uh in, if you any videos you'll see a link for the teespring like t-shirts and marks and that kind of stuff um you can get it from there or um it should be i think depending on your country it's not enabled for every country but uh, just right under the video there should be a little kind of ad like type of panel that has t-shirts and the caps but uh, if it's not there it the link is in the description of pretty much any uh, music videos um uh, david Locke, uh, love your covers but your arcade pcb repairs have helped me immensely on my own repairs that's great to hear uh, keep up the good work that's you know what that's very nice to hear because I, it just so happened that I got into this and when I started I really didn't have a clue really I just started again like this channel making these videos because um, there was very few people making videos like that there was a guy, a guy called um, One Circuit that was fixing a lot of arcade stuff and he stopped making videos so after that there's nobody regular making them so um, I decided to sort of force myself and, and re forced myself into repairing by filming them i was like if i if i film myself doing it then it's gonna just force me to finish and then uh, you know hopefully i'll have a video and i'll have a working board at the end so it kind of started like that and uh, and yeah it just it evolved and the channel evolved into because it was a dumpster for pretty much anything that was in music initially even the paintings and that kind of stuff um so the channel sort of evolved that way but it's great to hear that it's helped a couple of people because I mean, I got helped by actually Gadget UK's channel, um, who's here in the chat. So it, it was uh, it was a great help when I started doing my first repairs as well. Um, to to have a channel like that, it's cool. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Hollow Knight says he speaks French. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Tony Varnham says hi from France, and Lick is French too, and a lot of people winking and. Um, saying French stuff. Well, yeah, but I, I'd love to reply in French, but if you, you, you know, it's not going to work in this channel. So, uh, Lick Vampire Miss X is not Irlandian, but Irish. I think I think he was being facetious there. But um, uh, you you'll get to know Vampire. <laughs> he likes to <laughs> he likes to joke around. Uh, Ed Larry um, says hi to France. Uh, please, lads, I have your own discussion here. <laughs> Um, Vampire, uh, I bought Monster Boy last week. Oh, you did? I did. Did you play it? What did you think of it? Um, yeah, I, I have it. I actually bought it. They sent obviously they, they sent me um, a copy on the uh, on the uh, the Switch, and I bought a copy for the um, for the PS4 uh, when uh, when it came out. Um, but the copy I have for the Switch is all signed and that kind of stuff. So I played it on the PS4 first at, at launch. No, sorry. What am I saying? No, they sent me a download code for the PS4. So I played that uh, uh, just before launch. And then uh, when I was there, they gave me a signed copy of, uh, of the, the, the Switch version. <coughs> and uh, and then I uh, when I came back, I got the... Uh, was it Limited Run or whoever did the, uh, the, the physical version for the PS4? It was Limited, the series anyway. So I, I got a, a copy from uh, from the US and sent to me. Uh, so I, I have about three copies <laughs> of Monster Boy, and the Switch version uh, I have I have to I want to replay it on the Switch because I think the Switch is such a cool, perfect little system for that, and the the picture quality is really good, uh, really bright and shiny. So um, yeah, when we go on a holiday, that's what I'll probably uh, I'll probably replay the Switch version. Um, but what do you think? Did you try it yet, um, Vampire? Uh, you're a pack em off. Uh, oh man, Hollow Knight uh, is a huge game. Great choice. Yes, it's. Um, I'm. I was slightly overwhelmed, but how big it is and uh, how, just op I was gonna say open ended, but it's just you can miss a lot of stuff. That freaks me out a little bit because I like to see everything in a game. But um, I think I just have to accept that I, I won't on the first playthrough, or I'll, I'll, I'll have to replay or. or even if I finish it, I don't know if you can still play and revisit stuff. So um, I'll have to live with it. But um, yeah, it's 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 big. It's interesting. It, it certainly is interesting, and I loved the way they they don't hold your hand. Really, it's like just go explore, and then 
it just so happens that you discover all this stuff it's really really cool game really interesting approach to gameplay um mouse uh, says we are all just world citizens fair enough uh tommy uh, says hi uh tommy varman mega blast cover is awesome mate thank you very much the um um mega blast which one was that oh was the the, 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 the uh, xenon 2 is that what you're talking about um anyway uh, uh da, 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 da. where am i uh max for a fact i i am actually used to live in galway for a very short time oh there you go yeah galway is a great great little town i don't spend much time there anymore because i'm way out in the sticks now but um yes yeah, so it's a it's a really arty town kind of cool it's the right size for a small town for a small city but it's not too big not too small and uh, and what a view i mean the view over the burn is uh, is uh, stunning over that bay on a on a on a on a cloudy with kind of drifting those big drifting clouds and those uh, kind of uh, ray of lights coming over the burn it's 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 quite magical um bg Ali, nowadays i do a lot of impulse response <laughs> works it works well um fair enough hollow knights is uh, well done for the remix uh, you're welcome um ed uh, member uh, member badge hype uh, honor to be the first subscriber it's a small token to all the work you do thank you very much you do the awesome house arcades and location yeah we'll come back anytime we'll have a, a few games uh rgb craft um tonight's a bit even vampire he is here <laughs> yeah the all, all the all the big all the big shots from the uh discord server uh, came to support really cool thank you very much for stopping lads um like i have not started monster boy yet i'm busy with the remake of wonder boy 3 from lizard cube that was another one um uh, great great remake yeah i have played that i've met um, uh, myself and uh, omar actually uh, became very good friends because i met him there the launch uh, of monster boy so we 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 hung out and we we closed the bar together um <clears throat> They probably kicked us out uh, would be the correct terminology but it was just him and, and myself at the end and uh, and we had a plan of doing a, an interview like a podcast thing uh, for the mother focus podcast but he had just moved and his uh, internet connection wasn't great and i think i was having problems on my own as well so um that didn't happen and then kind of stopped doing those things so it just takes too much time um maybe maybe we'll do it again but yeah no i, I know uh, i know the game i've played it uh, i have it here do you see that those switch games here it's here somewhere and uh great great uh remake absolutely great uh, and the music is fantastic on that as well i love the music and i've been in touch with the uh the uh the uh, com uh composer like the the guy who made the music uh nice guy as well very nice guy but uh yeah omar and myself um, hit it off quite well <laughs> and then the drink helped uh good night hollow night good night um uh, everybody's saying bye to hollow night one circuit was a great channel yes he was yeah uh he was making some pole position multi-board then life gets in the way as i guess yeah it's really interesting because he's been like he was releasing a lot of videos and he's very knowledgeable and then he stops like not even you know d d less content just stopped altogether it's such a shame because uh, i think this channel could have done really well because uh, he had a nice way of explaining stuff as well and uh and a very simple way of explaining uh, complex things uh, which helped me helped me greatly in fact i i, I re his videos re regularly because they're they're very helpful and i always rediscover something else you know um again ed from a non yeah, a ton, a, a tony varman says yes it's a xenon too uh, ed larry uh, from a non-musical person guitar years ago <laughs> how do you break down a video game song in basic terms hey um it's kind of different every time there's different ways to do it i mean ideally if i can find a midi file because I, I can't read music really so if i can find a midi file that helps um so a lot of stuff from the nes era would have midi files or if i can find the original uh the original um uh, mod kind of chip tune file and convert that into midi at least i get the, the just to get the timing but very often the stuff that's wrong in there so i have to correct the midi file like the uh, uh, the recent msx cover I, uh, I base myself from a, a MIDI file and then find out really, really quickly that the MIDI file was really 
wrong, like incorrect, wrong notes, wrong background, the bass line was completely missing. Um, and then their timing was actually off, like for the main melody, it was re really weird file. So I had to redo a lot of that, redo the harmonies, because the harmonies were missing as well. So yeah, it's a mix of, uh, of, of stuff. Like if you have a MIDI file to base yourself on, yeah, you, you just do that, uh, it's handy. And then if I don't have a MIDI file or, or if the MIDI file isn't correct, it was just a matter of having the, I used the original, kind of like an MP3 or something like that. I just overlay it over my project. And then I, I make my own MIDI file um, where I just listen to say the bass line. Uh, so you kind of have to just get your ear uh, um, and, and just, under, you know, try to follow the bass line over everything else. And then, so I write the bass line. And then uh, once I have that, I, I, I go over the melody. Uh, and then if there's a harmony, I do that next. Uh, once I have those three, uh, usually then the rest is just kind of, you know, f filling the gaps and things like that, little licks and things like that are missing. But yeah, I, 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 if I use a MIDI file if I have one, and if I don't have one, I make one. It's just a, it's just a great base to start working. And then I start recording everything but i separate everything you know but uh there's no i can't i can't tell you in detail exactly what is it i do because i don't quite know myself i still make it along as i go like and i'm i'm probably wrong in the way i do things it's just worked for me so i don't, I don't know i don't know but it's like that i just g get the midi file or 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 the original um original music and then recompose over it uh, and until i get it right but then once it's time to record um I, I just record a first batch, like just rough, kind of rough um, uh, first takes, uh, uh, just to get a feel for the arrangement, well, like what's going to work where and that kind of stuff. And then once that's in place, I, I go over everything again, re record it, do proper pass, uh, double the melody, like right and left, same with the uh, the backing Zuki and things like that. So um, it's quite a long, a multiple stage process. So that's why it takes a lot of time. You know, it's. Uh, but I, after a while, you have a feel for it, and you you know you can break it down. And then I work on multiple stuff at once. So if I'm just doing kind of MIDI file writing, I do I do a few in a go, you know, because I've set up everything. I'm in I'm in that headspace, so I'll do two or three, and then uh, and then so I usually work on many covers uh, at once. Um, yeah, not right now. I haven't had time, but yeah, it's usually the way. So I, I'm gonna have to get back in on schedule and and get back into that it's going to take me a while right now it's going to be one at a time uh, if i even can because it's been a couple of weeks but yeah it's um it, it works like that um where are we uh alexander um tell us franco uh, i am uh, from mexico good welcome mexico um mouse aren't basically most older games available in midi format yes yes no they are they are a lot of stuff is available you know, in midi format problem is they're not always correct so you still have to just double check and overlay the original stuff over each track and just carefully just make sure that it's correct and uh, very for stuff like the nes um it's it's been listened and downloaded so many times if there's a mistake it's gonna it would have been spotted already but it does happen it does happen uh, i guess with you you know um, a bit more iffy with uh, stuff from the um, um, Mega Drive and Master System, especially this uh, incorrect stuff. And then once you go into the MSX and Amiga stuff, well, they're simply not available. Or if they are, they have a, a ton of mistake. Like the, um, I, I tried to do that with the uh, Chris Yildizbek uh, Turrican Two, the um, the intro for Turrican Two, uh, whatever it's called, the Final Fight. And uh, I used the MIDI file, and the MIDI file was quite poor atrociously so and uh, timing was off timing for the main melody was off and I was like how did you miss that it's the intro like it's just those chord first few chords like if you miss that you've missed it the, the entire song so th they, these were off actually timing wise and then the background cards were wrong and then the progression of the song was incorrect as well so i had to i had to <coughs> remake an entire midi file so that takes forever i mean something like that that takes a month of, uh, of work uh but yeah, if you're doing stuff from the NES, like stuff that is very popular and people would have uh, would have heard and reheard and and you know, double checked and all that, 
uh, it, it goes through so many layers of, of experts that it, they're pretty pretty correct now at this stage so yeah it's, it's easy to do a cover from an nes game in that sense you have most of the hard work or the hard work or the, the, the groundwork done um but because i do a lot of more obscure stuff uh yeah i still have to uh, to redo stuff and uh <laughs> my main problem is by the time i'm done um th that mini file is within my project and i can't really export it on its own so I i've made a correct mini file but i i don't have uh, an easy way or time uh, really to export it so um maybe sometime i'll get back in these and just uh, uh try to upload them somewhere like um We'll see. Uh, Joey Wall, uh, dot inspection coming up. Uh, got to go for now. No problem. What's the DO? Oh, DOT. Uh, fair enough. Um, Vampire um, says to mouse, not really. Not sure what that's about, but there, yeah. Uh, Fidel Castro. I, Ali, what is your favorite uh, Amiga games? Well, Dune, probably. Probably Dune and Tarikin, really. Um, yeah, lovely. Um, Department uh, of uh, Transport, but yeah, you no, know, he's a uh, uh, Joe is a truck driver uh, in the US, so that's probably mo most likely what it is. Um, is there any chance? Sorry, uh, Gadget UK, love the covers. Um, you do such an awesome job. Thank you very much, dude. Thanks for stopping by here. It's really cool to see you here. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I, I can't pronounce your name. It's all Russian, but um, um, uh, you ask, <laughs> is there any chance uh, of any battle load trials uh, to cover? Uh, again, um, uh, I, I will uh, respectfully <laughs> ignore the, the request. It's uh, uh, I, I, I just I can't I can't go that route of, of uh, saying I'll do something. It's just uh, yeah, <laughs> Ed Larry, thanks for the basic breakdown answer. Uh, very interesting. A uh, lot of skills and talent needed. Well, a lot of time, mostly. You know, that's really what it is. Uh, Tony Varnham, uh, Varnan, sorry. Um, since you're playing the wall, uh, Tarikin to Chris Schusbeck and you are friends. Um, we we well not since the wall. We've been. He's been a follower and a Patreon on the channel of the channel since 2014. Like since I started. Uh, he was one of my first Patreon contributors, so uh, yeah, we've been in contact since. And uh, I usually send him the. Actually, I do that now with a lot, but he was the first one I, I would send the the cover when they were done and go, you know, did I miss something? Are you happy with it? Will I publish it? Is it is it okay? You know that kind of stuff. Because uh, I wanted to make sure that he liked them first, and then you know if people like them afterwards, it was it was a bonus. But. Uh, I, I really wanted his, his proof for that but yeah you know he's been a he's been a supporter and and, and and patreon supporter of the channel since the beginning like since my fifth or sixth cover um really really cool very grateful for that um uh great live play star fox haha <laughs> by billy show not sure what that's about but yep um dry desert um uh, desert <laughs> try the desert uh dry Oh, dessert. Um, uh, hello, Wally. Um, hello. Uh, mouse, basically, same as tabs. I play guitar myself, and there's uh, so many mistakes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's the same problem with guitar. Yeah. If they're kind of okay, I just uh, use them as guidelines. That's, yeah, that's what I do. Like, I just, if the MIDI file, the original MIDI file is it's just okay, I, I don't need to correct it. I just use it as a guideline. It's a handy, it's handy to see, like, the timing and to see what comes in when and that kind of stuff. Um, a dry uh, desert. Have you considered any Tim Fallin remakes yet? Yes, I did the Pictionary uh, tune on the guitar. It's on the channel there. Uh, Potato, can you do a cover from the Lethal Enforcer soundtrack? Uh, I will respectfully, and I've explained that many times already, um, that I can't comment on requests because I can't go down that. I get like that's my whatever tenth request here. Um, but you know, I'm I'm flattered that people would like me to cover some of their favorite tune, but I just uh, I can't go down that, that route of of, of taking on request. Uh, Ed Larry, is there a cover that you really want to do but can't break it down or haven't had time? Um, yeah, most most of them. Um, one specifically. Well, it's just a, it's a matter of time. Like uh, like this stuff, like the Dune one. I I wanted to do it, but I I I wanted to have the get the sound right and the instruments just okay so 
I had to get the oud first, and then when I got the oud, I had to just get familiar with the instrument and learn it and that kind of stuff. And uh, so that took time. Usually, like and the and the, the Tarikan ones, yeah, I wanted to wait until I was more confident with my process and I could take because especially the final fight, that was a long, long, long tune. You know, um, it's like almost ten minutes or something. So. Um, th it was quite a big endeavor and I wanted to make sure that I, I could do it first. So I, I had it in my head that I wanted to do it. I just wasn't sure how and, and so I'm glad I waited a few years to do it until my process was a bit more refined and my sound was a bit more mature and, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, there's, there's stuff like that I, and actually I'm, I won't spill the beans yet, but yeah, there's stuff like that, um, that I feel I'm, I'm ready to take on, um, Others that probably need me to wait a bit longer or get uh, specific instruments for that kind of stuff. Like I, this instrument, like I did, like mentioned it earlier on, but the Hordi Gordi for a specific tune I have in mind that I, I'd like to get. And there's, uh, yeah, there's all all sort of stuff I, I still want to do. Um, and I haven't had the chance to do them either because the time isn't quite right or my, my, my skills weren't quite there or my technique wasn't quite there, or, you know, that kind of stuff. So... Yes, there, there's many, many tunes. Uh, Potato, uh, what's your personal favorite cover uh, that I've done? Um, hmm. That's r that's very hard. Quite people ask me that every time, and every time I I need to think about it, because it, it is it the one the cover I'm proudest, or the tune I like most, or or the one that's doing the best, or that kind of stuff. It'll probably be again either like the last the last dune cover I, I i was really fond of that i think the village theme from monster boy um the one that ended up in the game uh, th that is probably my proudest moment because what had happened is that i did i'd made a first version that was my second cover on the channel that was the village uh, theme and that's how i got spotted by uh, um fdg and game atelier so they got in touch and we started talking and you know next thing i was going to do more covers for the game so i did more covers i sent them that they were happy with it and you know i got paid and all that kind of stuff and then during the, the development of the game they decided that they wanted to redo the graphics from scratch entirely and then the animations and all that and then they sent me the, and throughout the process they sent me demos of the game um f for me to see what they like they didn't have to but they sent me the demos to see what the changes were and and get some feedback it was really cool really really cool and uh, so i was part in a way you know in that uh, of that development but now i was in a position where they'd made such changes to the game and, and graphically and and then now you had um <coughs> you had yuzo koshiro in the in, in making music for the game your humanity like you you've all these very very talented japanese uh, composers doing some remixes of the original stuff in there and now my, my covers are subpar. My old covers are substandard compared to the game itself. So they didn't say anything. They didn't ask me to redo them. But I was like, I got to remake them. I can't just leave them like that. So I remade all the old covers. And uh, and uh, I, and um, yeah, I think the village theme was the first one. And it was quite fleshed out and, and, and really, really changed. And it changed the way uh, as well. It was another moment where it changed the way I do covers. So I think that's probably one of my uh, my proudest cover uh, that I've done. Um, but in that respect, you know, there's the Metal Man theme. Because uh, that actually was the one where I, I, I changed my process and sound. Uh, and made the, turned the channel to what it is now. And uh, so there's stuff like that. But then there's all the... Chris Yulsbeck's um, tunes that I've done that I'm, I'm super proud of um, because these were my favorite tunes to start with the Castlevania stuff yeah it's just so many so many I'm, I'm proud of every cover is really <laughs> I wouldn't release them if I wasn't uh, if there was something I'm like eh, yeah, it's okay I probably wouldn't release it and that's why I'm late releasing it sometimes because I'm, I'm just about to click upload and I'm like no no i need to go back it's happened many many times like if you're a patreon it's happened many times or i go sorry won't be able to release or i release it a day late or two days late uh, early because it's like i'm 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 not satisfied yet uh, i need to you know spend a bit more time on that it's not quite what i i think i could do so yeah i'm, I'm if i release something i'm i'm 
I'm kind of happy and proud of it. Um, and it's my new personal favorite, obviously. Um, mouse uh, oud is such a good instrument. In one tuning, do you have it? Uh, I can't remember. I think it's. Huh. I think there's Turkish, Arabic, and different stuff. I think I, I'm in the Arabic tuning. I can't remember offhand now. Um, sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, Lick. Ah, Dune was great. Um, was Esram on the Amiga? I played it on a very old computer and still consider it as one of my favorites. Um, even if it's super basic. Uh, nobody from nowhere. And um, I know it's been a while since there were, has been a video cover challenge and the second Journey to Cities challenge so far. Sort of fell flat. Yeah, I did. But have you considered doing it again? I have thought of doing it again. It's just, um, I feel bad because that, that second one, yeah, did f there was the problem with that second challenge I did is I, I thought there would be more interest in Journey to Silius because it's one of those tunes that everybody seemed to enjoy and like. And but from the musician side of things, if very few people were interested in taking part, so. It's a funny world, the VGM world, because it's it's a lot of very younger um, men and women, and uh, and um, I don't know some a lot of this stuff is is doesn't really interest them that much, so you see a lot more uh, uh, covers from from GRPGs and obviously Zelda, Pokemon, all this Nintendo stuff, so uh, new stuff, which is great. But uh, yeah, there's there's, uh, there's not as much interest for a lot of retro stuff like that, so. Um, so it, it fell flat and only three people took part and the problem is that, you know, there was a, there was a, a it's a three, like I had three prizes, you know, where are three, but you know, one first, third and uh, second and third. And then, you know, everybody else so in the previous one, like was uh, in the mix of, you know, not being third, like not, you know, no losers, but <laughs> they didn't get placed. But now if you have just three people joining, now you have a first place you have a second place and you have somebody who's came last you know and i didn't want that um and uh yeah just it was it was an odd one an odd one but uh, some people three people had worked hard on it so i i, I kind of felt bad and uh, i had to tell them like one one person did take it bad it's unfortunate but um yeah so w will i do it again um i did think about it but I, i'm not sure I, I just don't want that to happen again and then it's a lot of work trying to review and and uh, and then i was on edge for the first castlevania one because um i was like uh, don't want to criticize people either but you know <laughs> we have to have a, a <laughs> results here so i'll see i'll see um we'll see um uh glorious uh, glory retro um hello hello dude um and or my favorite is your 1943 cover oh really <laughs> was it the cowbell stuff again um kissy foda is your accent german no 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 i mm. <laughs> how do you how, how do you get that um no it would be if it, if if it was anything it would be probably irish french mix um because that's what i am uh, uh dry desert or this <laughs> desert uh is there any current or older music aside from game music that you like a lot of any style aside from older music um current i don't listen to pop a lot of pop music but i, I listen to a lot of edm like I'm, I'm still a fan of um, dead mouse i listen to a lot of dead mouse in my car um current stuff i yeah i i i listen to a lot of podcasts on the on my radio if, or if it's uh, if, or on my phone if i'm driving uh, otherwise i do have pilot c's i listen to like it's a lot of uh, a lot of metal a lot of uh, edm yeah but dead mouse i love dead mouse a lot of french stuff as well uh, i listen to bits of everything really i tried not to um to get too stuck in a genre of music because then you you miss a lot of cool stuff and interesting stuff and creative stuff so like i never get people who just say oh i just like you know metal I, I, I like metal too like i was a you know metal head when i was younger like but um uh, i i liked other stuff because i you know i do like music in general um but that's i think that's because i i i, I i'm a musician myself so i can appreciate music at least for the effort and the creativity side as opposed to the um 
just taking i don't know it's, it's very tribal when you get into genres that way and i and i was never like that so i listen to a bit of everything really um Whooper Peg, greetings from Germany. I really enjoy your work. It always takes me back from my Amiga 500 days. Yeah, thank you very much, dude. It's a shame you don't see more Amiga covers and MSX covers and that kind of stuff. Like it seems to be the the VGM community has as cool as friendly and uh, enthusiastic as it is, does get stuck on on on, on the popular kind of uh, JRPG and Nintendo uh, Nintendo franchise. It's a shame they don't go out and discover more stuff um from other platforms like you know like the amiga i mean there's a there's a wealth of uh, of music uh, uh, from the amiga days and commodore so i don't want to get into doing more commodore 64 stuff um i just need to find the time i have a list of stuff from the commodore 64 i want to do um but no i don't take requests and <laughs> so no, don't ask me uh, and i i won't i won't say what they are yet um rgb craft uh, i thank ali uh, all i can for doing during the series uh, didn't didn't have a nest back then but his uh, soundtrack is amazing thank you well thank you very much what yeah the the, the journey to silly soundtrack was fantastic i think that's why i thought it would be more popular when i did the uh the the contest thing but <laughs> there you go i was wrong uh, uh tony uh nikki boom first level theme please guys what did i say about requests <laughs> Uh, no, I get the winky face there. Um, Ed Horse, uh, when we we get Last Ninja 2 cover, I love the Central Park. Yeah, that Last Ninja 2 theme is requested a lot as well. Um, that's going to be a tricky one because those. Uh, the problem is though with those. I have to be selective with those uh, um, uh, 664 tunes if I want to cover some from that um, era because there's a lot of uh, just long string kind of instruments that just last forever and then modulate and that kind of stuff. I can't do that on a, ban a banjo, obviously. I can try to cheat a bit and, and use the Ebo and things like that, but there's a lot of stuff I just cannot physically replicate. Uh, at least not with a banjo. And then we'll have to look into flutes and and bowed strings and that kind of stuff. And I'm not uh, on the flute, maybe. But then again, if it's if it only if it's diatonic, if it's chromatic, I'm screwed. And then on the uh, uh, on the uh, fiddle, I'm not quite competent enough there to do it but so uh, i'll have to yeah i'll have to be selective uh that tune is not probably not something i can do straight away if i get into the um, the uh, c64 repertoire but we'll, we'll see we'll see we'll see i just need to uh, i need to spend some time actually that sort of answers your question a bit there the, a lot of stuff from the c64 era i feel i can't quite get there yet like i'm i'm closer to having ideas how i can replicate some sounds and or approach it or, or or but um like it's stuff from monty on the run for example it just that tune is so long and then it gets so crazy like technically it i wouldn't be able to pull it off you know on the on a mandolin or it, it goes too fast at the end um so and then on you know very few people would have listened to the entire tune so I, i'm just yeah is it worth playing entirely but then you're not playing the tune next day so it's complicated it gets very very tricky uh, very quickly so i wouldn't be i wouldn't be proficient enough you know on the mandolin or the banjo to, to play that fast um so i yeah I, it, it's going to be a few select tunes and i can't do all of them so that's why i don't you know i can't even think of doing stuff like the the, the c64 version of uh, of our type or the Ghost and Goblins for Amiga, Amiga because some of it sometimes is just not quite feasible yet, you know. Um, uh, do you have any issues, again, I had the horse, do you have any issues with copyright um, on making a cover? For instance, a buff comment with Last Ninja and Matt Grady. Obviously, Chris had no issue with Turkin as he is if he's a patron supporter. No, I've ha I haven't had... Uh, I haven't had... Uh, copyright issues in that respect see the, the, the one of the thing is that very often those tunes the, the composer doesn't have the copyright the copyright stays with the whoever owns the, the company because that was the agreement at the time uh, and it wasn't even a thought that uh, you know m game musicians could be artists f full artists like it was because this was a new medium it was very chaotic and that kind of stuff so 
uh, copyright really, at least for the artists, wasn't really a concern for the companies or the developers. So they, they made those musics and never really uh, quite signed or kept the copyright to the, the original tune. So um, it that's why it's been relatively easy to license, well, to, to license or to make these things because there, there's no copyright issues really. And then whenever you license them, it's just licensed to the copyright holder. Uh, now, after I've talked to Barry Leach a few times, and some of the tunes he's actually retained the right, so it it's not it's not always you know one or the other, but it's just uh, yeah, it, it's rare that it's uh, of tunes of that time. It's rare that it's the composer that has the right to the tune. So uh, it's it's unfortunate, but. That's the way things were. But I mean, no, if, if there was a copyright strike and there has been copyright strike on the channel, a copyright strike, no, a copyright claim, sorry, is different than a channel strike. A channel strike will take your channel away after a tree. But um, copyright strike just means the revenue, that's, you know, the ad revenue from that video goes to the copyright owner that claimed it. That's really what it is. So, um, and I've, I've explained this before, but uh, uh, previously in the video here, but um, essentially now I can share the revenue with the copyright owner. So if they strike and they go, no, we're going to take that money from the ad. Well, I still get some share of that revenue because I've made the video. It's my composition or it's my arrangement. Uh, it's my performance and it's my video content. So I, I get some copyright from that as well. So we, now we share revenue. But in the past, until a couple of months ago, it was all you know f for the the owner uh, i've no i've no problem with uh, with copyright strikes i actually i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't now that we can share revenue i wouldn't i wouldn't care if all my videos got copyright claimed because uh, at least i'll know that here on this platform the, uh, the some of the the revenue is going to the original composer you know um Dry, uh, dry. The, I'm just gonna call you dry. <laughs> uh, I had both an, an, an Atari ST and an Amiga. I like some of the Atari ST version better than the Amiga. Uh, it is sometimes also completely different music on various platforms. Right? That's why I can't just start um, and moving into doing platform specific version of the same tune because I'll never see the end. If I if I did that once, I guarantee that every other platform will jump on the bandwagon and ask me to. Oh, can you do the version from this? You know, the Spectrum or the Atari ST and that kind of stuff. And I'll end up making the same not the same tune but covering the game again and again and again i don't want to get into that and, and I, I like to be on my own schedule and i like to uh, have it's not a job for me so i still have to retain my choice of uh, what i want to do uh, when and uh, and you know how often um <clears throat> Bob, well, we start to find the older game uh, that we'll talk about sorry it's hard to find the older gamers, sorry, that we'll talk about any music from the Amiga MSX uh, with older, yeah. yeah. It is, it is. And, and the, one of the reasons is that, like, I'm f 43, 44, can't remember. Um, but a lot of guys my age that had an Amiga, that had those machines, kind of stopped, you know, at some point. So I know there there's still a, a lot of fellows and women over 40 still play video games or still are on youtube but it's just the majority just stopped like most of my friends who had um amigas and all that kind of stuff just stopped being gamers uh after a while like the vast majority of my friends i'm the only one who's still doing stuff you know so my, i'm talking about childhood friends here but um so yeah a, a lot of that generation just kind of stopped um taking interest and they they didn't make the transition into online and and retro gaming or modern retro gaming so it's hard this is obviously less and less it just but it was just surprising because when i was a kid everybody had a computer everybody i knew of my age like it just there was a computer in the house and inevitably it was a, an, an amiga or an atari st or spectrum or something like that or an amstrad or whatever so yeah yeah and then the consoles arrived and it just changed the deal completely it's really funny really interesting um so it's but it's yeah it's a shame because there's a wealth of, uh, of of good games and good tunes to be appreciated but uh, i'm seeing i'm seeing a lot more i'm seeing a lot more uh, um commitment from from amiga fans or msx fans if you will like if i do a cover from them that 
it'll be shared on most of the webs related websites and forums and that kind of stuff and it's really cool to see it's really cool to see the appreciation and the uh because these things are rare you know the, the nes covers the, the, these things are a dime a dozen on on the on youtube um msx covers you'd be hard pressed to find <laughs> somebody that does msx games uh you know so uh yeah it's always much appreciated by the community and uh, everybody shares it um uh so a few more i'm gonna stop here after because i think it's been two and a half hours of a uh, chat and my voice is gone as you can tell uh but rgb craft sorry i uh, was out eating something do you pay for licenses that's what i was willing to ask before um yeah no i have to pay for the licenses so not if i do something on youtube no it gets claimed or it doesn't but if i put something on sorry if i put something on spotify if i put an, an itune google play uh, deezer i think it's on pandora as well and youtube uh, music so my videos are essentially doubled on youtube they're on youtube music as just music mp3 kind of th stuff you can actually see it on the channel there's a playlist of all the albums and it's th there's the video as well um but uh, if i want to put them on those platforms yeah i, I have to go to sound drop and it's about ten dollars per track to acquire the license and they take care of all that you know they, they do the research and uh, and usually a week later it's on the whole all those platforms but yeah it, it costs ten dollars per track so i usually what i do and i've said that before but i i, I put the videos first and then i put them on bandcamp and that ger generates some revenue so i can pay for the license to do it properly you know and to make sure that whoever owns the rights to thing gets at least some share because uh, it's really important to me that they do you know so um and uh so yeah it, it costs money and uh it's but I, I i want to do it you know uh i'm uh, gonna finish oh there's still, oh, there's still a lot of question lads um <clears throat> charles 2099 thanks only uh one more top gear Barry Leach song, sorry for the joke. <laughs> um, yeah, Top Gear, that's a tricky one. I'd like to do it actually, but it's a tricky one. Uh, Mr. Plume uh, uh, asking if he's the only French here. I know there's a, a few French people here. Uh, Wesley Felipe um, asks something in um, in Portuguese, and I assume you're from Brazil, but I don't speak Portuguese, so sorry about that. Um, Lake is going to sleep. Uh, thanks for the answers and the fantastic work. Today. You're welcome. Thank you very much for stopping by. Borb, yeah, all I've heard about from back then is Tim Follin and uh, Jiren and something. I'm not sure what that's uh, in reference to, but uh, Mr. Rumors, uh, glad to see you, bro. You rock. Greetings from Russia. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Um, Baus, uh, I think that's the thing in general. Yeah, the technology and knowledge from old tube valve is uh, also dying out. Uh, Mr. Plume said he discovered me in that French podcast, like as retro, and saw me in uh, Monster Boy, and he loved the game. Um, well done for the music. Well, thank you very much. Obviously, we can't speak French here on this channel because nobody will understand except French people, and you know I'm open to everybody. But yeah, I'm, uh, you can hear me speak French in the uh, La Cas Retro podcast. Uh, RGB Crafts, thank you for clarifying, Ali. Always good to hear from you. You're welcome, dude. Um, alexander frost uh you got skipped oh i'm really sorry alexander um can you re-ask your question i i didn't see oh here it is uh i know this might get missed um but i just wanted to say thank you for doing flood of power for midnight resistance what a cool tune isn't it it's it's one of those just it's such a cool tune i ha yeah i love doing that tune it was tricky it was actually tricky to do properly and get still get that feel of uh i was gonna say it's almost synth wavy kind of dystopian feel um using acoustic instruments but uh it, it, i think it came out okay um yeah really 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 strong tune um and i did have to spend a lot of time on the eq on each in individual instrument so they wouldn't clash and um, that was the problem in that that cover the the the, the sound escape for each instrument would sometimes clash and create you funny artifacts there's one thing i don't show much and i don't don't tell but it's just uh i, I have to spend a lot of time on the eq um so the each instrument comes out clear and and separate that that takes forever um 
Ed Horse, thanks for the stream. Eurox, thank you very much for the support, dude. Um, uh, Leonardo, good night. Uh, say hello to Brazil. I did already. Uh, RGB Craft. Um, Wesley Felipe was saying, he was just saying hi and admires your work. Well, thank you very much for translating and uh, you're more than welcome, uh, Wesley Felipe. Uh, Morgan Lietar, just a quick bonjour. Bonjour. Uh, bonsoir. Um, and Mouse, just nice to hang out. Uh, good night uh, to the EU people. <laughs> Enjoy your day for the rest. Um, Tony Varnan, you are very strong with your covers, but you make a good video how to make a video <laughs> game music cover. Do you think you make a, a video, a funny video again? Uh, yeah, maybe. They're just these things are. It's it, they happen on the whim, really. So if 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 I if I get drunk enough and uh, I have time, <laughs> I'll do another one. And uh, but uh, it this one just happened like that. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Um, I, I used to make more videos with that puppet um, on the other channel. And I, I, for a while, I was thinking I should start a dedicated channel for for this thing, but it's just the time, time. Like I have a full time job, and uh, that you know that I like first, and uh, so I can't, you know, I can't spend. Uh, I, I have enough distraction as it is uh, without starting a, a another channel. I just uh, otherwise I won't be able to do those music covers if I started that, and then I wouldn't have time to do those repairs. I don't have time to paint right now. I literally, I would love to paint more, and I, I would love to put more painting videos on the uh, painting channel. But I just, I, my, yeah, I don't have, I don't have time. Um, and it's not that I procrastinate. It's just uh, my 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 time my my time is taken to the down to the like the, the minutes, you know, these days. And I, I have I have an hour to do this, and I have an hour to do that, and it's just. Uh, so yeah, that's why I've 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 grayed so much in four years. Um, but um, so yeah, I th unfortunately I don't have time for the the public. If I was doing YouTube full time, maybe maybe I'd have time for stuff like that. I certainly would be uh, painting again, and I'll I'll, I'll be making uh, music videos regularly. But it's a side gig for now, and um, I'm having fun with it anyway. So there you go, folks. Uh, thank you very much uh, for everybody, um, who, 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 to everybody who came in and, uh, I'm, I'm getting very tired here and my voice is gone. It's been two and a half hours. Uh, I thought this would be just an hour and a half and we'll be done, but, um, you had tons of questions, folks. Thank you very much. Don't forget if you get a chance, you know, help me support the channel, uh, on Patreon or uh, the uh, membership or, or you can get these as well to, um, to help me, uh, uh, with the channel, um, stuff like that. All the links are in the, uh, video description and thank you very much, uh, for stopping by. Thank you very much for uh, asking questions. Jump man, you just uh, in, uh, um, how are you doing? We, we were just done. I'm sorry about that. And, uh, sure. I'll see you next time. So next we'll do one of these again. I think uh, one every two months isn't, um, out of order. Um, if it was once a month, I think people would get sick of it. Uh, but I think once every two months is just just about right. So uh, have a good night, uh, everybody. Have a good day, everybody else, or a good evening or whatever. Uh, I am done. I'm beat, and uh, I'm going to go to bed now. Thank you very much, folks. See you soon.